Hi, this is Tim Schaefer, and I'm here with, uh, say your name, please. My name is Scott Campbell. Scott Campbell, um, and Scott is the artist who created all these vaults. Uh, we did these together. I wrote them, and Scott drew them. Yep, amazing team. Yes, and uh, they are included in Psychonauts, the uh, excellent game Psychonauts, which was made in 2005. Well, it was made uh, in from 2000 to 2005. <laughs> it took a long time to make. 2000 -0. Yeah. And now I've extracted these heavy emotional personal memories of people's most secret thoughts from the characters in the game and put them into a iPhone app right here for you to enjoy. I feel like this is like these are the last these are the last things that we did or I did maybe not. It was yeah, it was very near the end. So I could say made in 2005. Yeah. This these probably were all 2005. Facts, you love them. Facts, facts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just uh, <laughs> get on thing. with this now, and <laughs> <laughs> and let let's move move on for the first slide. <laughs> let's show the slides, and we'll talk about either what they mean or what uh, we thought they meant, or we'll just make fun of your drawing. Ah, oh, sounds great. Let's make fun. You can make fun of the writing too, but there's no words. <laughs> Good luck. Oleander's Pride. This is the first one you see in the game, and it sets up how Oleander sees himself, right? Yep. A lot of people in the game have two vaults. They have, like, one that's, like, easy to find, and it's how, you know, they see themselves, and then they have a hidden one sometimes. It's, like, the truth, the dark secret. So how Oleander sees himself is with, obviously, really big hands. No, long legs. Noodle arms. You got long legs. Noodle arms and long legs and... And yeah, noodle noodle limbs. He looks essentially like uh, himself, but on like stilts. Right, 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 right. Yeah, he could actually probably make those like robot as a robot arms and legs. And he's anyway. carrying a flag for that's not America. No, it's for country. <laughs> oh, country! It's for country. Because we never said where this game was set. It is. We don't say that it is set in America. Although there are a lot of eagles coming up, so. It's for, yeah. It's one of the eagle-based nations. So, he, he, next slide, you see him charging through the battlefield, uh, explosions going off. It looks a lot like uh, Private Ryan. Do you, were you inspired by Private Ryan? I was very, so, yeah, very inspired by Private Ryan. Had you just seen that when you drew this picture? Yeah, I was probably really wa I was probably watching Band of Brothers at this time, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're really into that one. I was super into that one. Too. He's really tall compared to the other guys. He's like 90 feet tall. That's perspective, dude. Those guys. Uh, see, those guys. You're gonna know. use these kind of like. That's what you're here for. Is telling me these really complicated art terms. <laughs> that's like perspective. All. And mm -hmm. uh, there's is lines. He step, stepping into a vanishing point. <laughs> yes, that is, <laughs> dude. That's exactly where that boat is in the back, and all those planes are coming from the vanishing point, bro. <laughs> yeah. You're. I think we've all learned something here. Now he's jumping out of an airplane, all guns a blazing. I think those are guns. Or else he's carrying. Sparklers. Yeah. Yeah, he's, re he's here for the fireworks show. This or two big sea anemones he's carrying down to the, to the ground with a knife between his teeth. But if he, like, bumped right. into something, that knife would just, wouldn't it just, like, cut his head off? Probably. It looks like it's already kind of awry there. Yeah. And he's constantly just losing bullets from his guns. Is that what's that? <laughs> I just, <laughs> just fly out of his belt. <laughs> yeah, his belt. He's like, oh, they, it's not fastened in. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh god! I wish I could just. This thing. He lands on the ground, totally unarmed. <laughs> yeah, totally naked. Maybe his clothes fell off too. Now he's also the king of the navy, apparently, because in this next slide he's riding a torpedo, kind of like a uh, uh, a pinup girl would be doing. Yep. But he's not a pinup girl. He's no, no, no. the king of the army and the navy, and he has a soul patch, which I think I had at the time of this. So. Um, are you saying something about me and Oleander, or am I just trying to make this about me? Um, no, I'm. Uh, he's definitely based on you, dude. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a tattoo? Is that his chest visible with a skull? Uh, that's his. Uh, that's his scarf. He has like a. Oh, I thought that was. Scarf. I see a skull tattoo on his chest. Am I imagining that? Yeah. Well, you know, it's on a scarf, but you know, it could be his chest. Um, it's however you want to interpret it, my bro. And what's he gonna do with that anchor? Um, he's probably gonna hook, um, hook 
the boat, bring it closer to him so he doesn't have to and travel then, as far. And then shoot the boat in the head. Yeah, then shoot the boat straight to the brains. <laughs> hey, have you noticed? Did you notice that I put like uh, speed lines? I, I used the smear mm-hmm. tool and uh, I, I made him go a little faster. That was early on in the days of Photoshop when. Where? Oh, his elbow is all drippy. Yeah, yeah, that's. Is that's, that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's speed. I guess that makes him look faster. Well, his elbow is definitely fast, and is his <laughs> forearm, <laughs> his wrist is just smudgy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, they get, they get better as you go, really. Right. He's not just a furious warrior. He's also a great humanitarian. And his, the size yeah. of his guns are only matched by the size of his heart. Yeah. As you can see in this slide here. Yeah, that child is... Uh, he ne- he's in need of that box of uh, of crosses. <laughs> of math. Of math. <laughs> he's in need of a box of math. <laughs> oh, man. This is going to come in handy while, oh, to keep you occupied while you're nursing your injury, little one. And I've, I've mentioned being confused here before because I always thought, kind of thought he was wearing chaps because it looks like his bare bottom <laughs> is sticking out the back <laughs> of his pants. But I realized that's the nurse. That's uh, the nurse's body, not the coach's no. assless chaps. No, it's not. But that, the lady, the, yeah, the one on the left is definitely interested in wearing those chaps. I guess they're both looking she, at his butt. Yeah, she's looking right at him. And she's wearing yeah. like a Madonna conical bra. Oh, I really? just noticed. Well, no, that was yeah. a style back then. Everyone mm-hmm. had kind of pointy, you know, zigazungas. And this last shot, I just have one question about what is his right hand doing? Because it looks like it's pulling on something or... Uh, he just, is... I, uh, I don't want to say. I don't want to say. Yeah, go ahead and say it, bro. Say what you think's going on there. Like he maybe has his thumb up his butt. <laughs> uh, that, yeah. Yeah, man. He's hiding That's it. what's... He's oh, I got, th- he's I got that right? It. Yeah, he doesn't want anyone to know where it is, his thumb. That he's, he's a <laughs> thumbs up sort of dude. <laughs> well, that's great. So that kind of wraps up that slide. I mean, that's that whole vault, I think, I get it, that ties it all together. Yep. He's like, oh, thumbs up. It fits in his personality really well. And now I think I understand the coach a little bit better. (laughs) Oleander's shame. This is the uh, more secretive vault. It's hidden behind a mental cobweb, which, as you know from playing the game, right? Mm, Yep. That's right. You don't have... You don't have a cobweb duster when you first go through this mission. So you can't get this vault until later, which is why we did that. So you wouldn't know that the coach was um, had this dark baggage, if you will. He looks pretty psyched to just have a mustache. Yeah, it's growing in nice. It's growing in nice for young coach. And I noticed that he has four fingers, which is probably why we never came out in Japan. Yeah, that was that's true. <sighs> remember that whole thing? Uh, I do remember that yeah. debacle. Oh, here we see the coach being literally measured up for the army. Yeah, he's getting measured up for the army. Small dude. He's not that big. And I think that it it's really brings it all home when you took the time to highlight his delicate man breasts. Yeah, I, that added on another few hours to this drawing, is focusing on those, those uh, his chest to make sure the, that's exactly right. So that you make sure that you know, even though he's small, he's also out of shape. <laughs> right, and he also doesn't get out too much and take off his shirt, which is makes him. Even or he gets more. out a lot in his undershirt. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. Good it kind of makes a weird little smiley face, but I guess that often happens. And there's the uh, framed star, which is is that the president of country? <laughs> yeah, that's it's one of the most important. Uh, one of the most important things is the star, so might as well frame it. Are you sure that's not America? Because America uses stars a lot. Oh no, no way, dude! America's copied country oh look at this he's getting kicked out of country he's getting kicked out of the army for uh, being too short I presume yeah being too short and having that the highlights on his boobs and for having a tiny mustache and having a tiny mustache Which get back here that. when that thing grows in full that's okay here's it. I'm going to point out something that's different on these slides yeah. there's a sun in this one yeah okay hang on getting kicked out of the what? Uh, this is probably I'm I'm gonna say the Air Force because there's planes there and there's wings on on the 
flag. Yep, yep. And the yep. guy's wearing more of a boot, like a cowboy boot, which is very popular. Yeah, I never popular. noticed that. He actually drew special boots, yeah. which is great. Thanks, and those man. are like jet fighters with props. Mm hmm That's true. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Good job. Wait, why is that weird? What's wrong with that? Well, the prop propellers on a, a jet. It's got like a little cockpit, like a... Oh, I guess you're right. I should, unusual. I should have done more. <laughs> no, I like it. should have like done it. more like research. It. Okay, next is the navy. Well, how would you describe that boot there? Uh, it's more a little bit more soggy looking. Because <laughs> he's been in the water. Yeah. Uh, and why are those boats on the land? They got to park them somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> All right. Okay, here's the thing I was gonna tell you about. Where's the sun? I know. It's gone. It's gone. Wow. So what is the meaning of that? Did you mean to get rid of the sun? <sighs> well, you know, I think There's a lot of extra rays here. I know. I know. Well, you know what? The sun is... Uh, you can't always depend on the sun. That's an early lesson that um, <laughs> Coach learned. Maybe it's about his dimming prospects. That's true. He's all, Even the sun isn't even up for me. But the, and he's getting kicked out of the... Uh, the what? This is like the chef... Army, he, not even good enough for the chefs. <laughs> Which actually, well, you gotta be. A lot of people might not be good. That's probably a tough job. Actually. I know, but and you got to be tall enough to reach the counters just to see what you're chopping. Exactly, dude. So I'm, I'm hoping he takes this well and just realizes that he should get into another. I line hope of work. so too. Oh no, oh. he's mad. He's super mad. He's taking it real to heart. He's taking it badly. Now, did you mean to draw it so that he was kind of flipping the bird, or is and you censored that, or is that just meant to be a fist, like a ruining fist? It's meant to be a fist. Why? Do you see some remnants of a finger? <sighs> a little bit on that poster behind him. Oh. Huh. No. Oh, I guess so. Oh, nice. I love those posters, though, by the way. I like nice the guy man. that it looks like a little stick figure carrying a dental floss stick. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, dude, that's the dent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that. And the, <laughs> the dentist's going into <laughs> battle. <sighs> dentist yeah. and uh, there's a sailor and then just all the other guys. There's the so, oh, oh, there's math again down there. Yeah, what's well, lower, a little bit lower. Right. And I see up top there's a poster that seems to celebrate the colon and the parentheses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so also punctuation are really big. Yeah, even punctuation kind of, he hates punctuation. These are all posters of things that really just um, gave him a hard time. And that he yeah. just hates. And he's, um, we're not saying that short people are bad. We're saying he's mad because he got so harshly rejected by all the armed services of country. Right. Not that all people are like that, right? No, 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 yeah, yeah. I think, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Even uh, though you yourself are really tall as an artist. Yeah, I've never had a problem being kicked out of the army because I've never really yeah. applied for it. But he all also, right. um, he's got messed up hair too, which is like. You know, go, going from real, really nice hair to messed up hair is probably he's one of like, the worst things. He's have. so mad because he's like, this took me hours to get this all gelled. Okay, this is Sasha's first vault. It's his first loss, which is a sad story from his childhood. Right. It's kind of a bummer. So you see what looks like Molina, our um, localization producer. Oh. But it's not her, is it? It's not. It's not. It kind of looks like her, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it might have been inspired by Molina. Who knows? That fact might not mean that much to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. But a, a lot of, you know, Molina's friends. Right. Molina. Shout out to Molina. <laughs> Shout out. So those are, those are uh, Sasha's chubby little fingers down there in the corner. Yep. That's Sasha's and, little baby hands. And there's a rainbow on that little rattle. So that's his mom. See how I figured these things out? His mom, this is, you're right, dude. And his mom is, I think his mom must might be teaching him this, his first high, his first five. No, like here's, yeah. Because that's like baby's first five. Thing I never now. noticed that little hand right there. Yeah, I didn't. It's right there. Right or she's there. offering him a choice, high five or the rattle. <laughs> Take your pick. This yeah. will forever be your future. And I think he chose probably. What, what do you think he chose? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he chose? I don't see him as high fiver, high fiving very much. Yeah, he is reaching I think towards. He's more the of a rattler. 
Okay, on the next slide, you see her eating, uh, offering some oatmeal to him. And what's the artistic term for why that spoon is so big? Um, it's uh, foreshortening. I knew it. It's so really? smart. Yeah. Enlargening also. It's enlargening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In perspective. And uh, she's uh, feeding him and saying choo-choo probably. Choo-choo, here comes the oatmeal train. Yep. He's, she's in mid-choo. Dude, I just noticed, like, man, he's making a major mess, dude. Look at all this food all over the... His... You know, you know, even though you don't have children, you understood what it's like. I know, man. Just super messy. I know it's hard I think to that's get his the hand, though. That's not a, a pile of mashed potatoes. That's his hand. <laughs> oh, you're right. It is his hand. <laughs> Who drew Good this? Call. Oh, I forget. <laughs> I forgot. Somebody is just... Somebody okay. Somebody did not nail that one. Okay. <laughs> Now he's way up in the air. Is there an artistic term for that? Can you tell? Um, air perspective. And what is the dad doing? Is he unapproving? Is he like saying, "Why are you throwing my baby in the air?" He's just like I, he's probably like, "I don't understand the fun in that." And you snuck in a little cleavage too, which is your way. Sneaky. Right. Oh, I feel bad for making that joke because now she's dead. Oh no, you're right. She's dead, dude. This is where it gets pretty sad pretty sad in the spirit of Christmas is flying away from her or a moth yeah. and she's got spots on her face which I never noticed does that imply she died of the pox yeah I think so some sort of pox well he shouldn't be touching her then he's like holding her hand well she's already dead right doesn't that mean it's not contagious or I guess it is contagious I don't, so I don't know how pox work do you why did she die at 3 o'clock I don't know you know you know that's very it's uh it's a very special time I, we'll probably find out later right I don't, or do think so. I don't think so. We never do. No, we never oh, did you do. notice the lamp, dude? Did you notice the lamp? It's a beautiful Tiffany lamp that has a little bit of discontinuity. It's Why? not connected. It's not. Con what were you? <gasps> That's Is a cartoon. That a Tiffany lamp? I never, never noticed that. Yeah. Is that the lamp that you shoot later in the game? I think it is, dude. I just realized. I did just you plan this that. out, or is this some crazy accident? No, dude. A victory that... for good taste. That's the lamp. That's crazy. Well, why? Know, why did Sasha hate those lamps? Oh, he associates it with his mother's death. Oh yes. My God, that's brilliant. Yes. Can't oh believe you gosh. did that. I know, man. Pretty smart. Snuck it in. Game is amazing. Awesome. Okay, this seems suspicious to me. The dad doesn't call anybody or a coroner or anybody. He just buries her all by himself, like out in the backyard. Right. But uh, it seems like kind of a you? rush. I mean, that's like—is he trying to bury evidence? Did he kill her? I don't know. Normally, you so. call nine one one. I mean, he's in. Germany, right? But is he, he's on the old west, which is where you bury people like that. What is the <laughs> That's true. Well, I don't know. I mean, how how it is in the middle of nowhere in Germany. It does look like a shot from a great old western, though. Should You're make right, a western yeah. about it. A German yeah. western. And then in this next slide, you see what looks like the actual set from the game, which is the crib set. That little arched block that you have there. As yep. in the game, you can climb on that, and you can climb up those poles of the crib because you're in the crib that you play on later in the game. Oh, the poor dad, though he's so sad. I know. Mm -hmm. He's trying to read a book, but he's just so distracted by thoughts. He's holding a book. So oh, his hands are like out. crossed under the book. Yep. It's kind of weird. Hey, that's what happens. Wait, you've never crossed your hands under a book. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's holding it with his wrists. He's just turning the pages with his mouth or his tongue or something. He is. Hey, man, he is sad. Extreme sadness sad. makes you do yeah. weird things with your hands. Yeah, that's as a you good can lesson. see, as yeah, man, and I'll and, you know, as you can see, this is uh, <coughs> there's a big uh, this is you know there's, this is where he's not getting as much affection from mm. his father. There's bars in between him. Whereas his mother, his mother mm -hmm. used to really throw him around, mm -hmm. hug him, mm -hmm. feed him. His dad probably doesn't even feed him anymore. <laughs> well, I I, I'm sure he feeds him. Sasha's second sight. I think this is the story of how he gets his psychic powers. Or why he gets his psychic powers. Or maybe when he gets his psychic powers. I think the third one. He's uh, helping his dad. What's the term for what he's doing with his dad? Cobbling. Helping. What? No, no, you had it. Cobbling. Oh, cobbling. <laughs> Co helping. Cobbling. Hitting. Hammering. 
<laughs> he's helping his dad make shoes, which is also part of the level. I'm pointing out this stuff that's really obvious now. Which I'm just so just proud of the yeah, intense craftsmanship. This is where you start to see the beginning of the Nine hairstyle. Nine is his last name, not the number yeah. nine, but Nine, like no. Anyway, yeah. his hair is like parted in the middle and curled around, which is, I think his dad has it too. His dad has it on one side, and his mom even had it. It's like the family the hairstyle. Curls. Yep, the curls, dude. You know, that's interesting that he's had the same hairstyle since he was, however old he is here. Like, hmm. how old do you think he is here? Like, yeah, he's 14? like 12, yeah, 14. Gosh, man. Same yeah. hairdo since then. It's pretty. I know. I had a much cool. When I was 14, I had a, a bi level m mullet, I think. Bi level. <sighs> it was called a bi level. We didn't call them mullets back then. That's totally off topic. Anyway, um, so Sasha's like, please tell me about my brother. Oh, Papa, Papa. Like that. Oh, and he, yeah. the dad's like, no, I cannot talk about it because I have no emotions. I'm too stern. Did you see, like, there's a lot of innocence coming from Sasha because I don't know if you noticed, but his pupils are just, like, kind of mm -hmm. not dark. Mm -hmm. I think, I think is that, that what that means? A little bit, maybe a little more innocence, and the sun is shining through from the heavens. Like, he's just the most innocent little dude. And it saves ink. That's true. Unless it's a draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saving the company money. And then Sasha's like, I am going to pick your pocket and take your wallet. <laughs> yeah, I guess I better yeah touch your butt. What are so he's using his psychic powers to try and find out about his mom, and I see, I see the thoughts going on, but there's also these two lines coming off his dad's back, like they're wings or something. What hmm. are those? Uh, that's just energy. Is that the motion of him bending over really fast, like the dad is bending <sighs> over too fast? Yes, it's, it's all. <clears throat> my back. I guess you really don't Could know. It's okay. No, bro, I just... You I have just no say, explanation. It's, <laughs> it's energy. It's psychic energy. Why is Sasha wearing a beret in this one? Oh, man. It's cool. It's a good drawing. It is. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's perspective. <laughs> you already used that one. Uh, uh, it, uh, it's point of reference. It's foreshortening. Foreshortening. Yeah. Now you see how far back the, the Sasha 9 hairstyle goes, because the baby has it, or else he has a butterfly that landed on his head. But it looks like he's got the curls already, even though he only has two hairs. The and butterfly inspired his uh, hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and she's got the same exact thing. Yeah. So it's all Gosh. over. So but the she... dad's half missing. So he remembers his mother as a loving mother. And he sees his dad, how he sees his mother as a saint in this next one. A saint. You see? Mm-hmm. This is a little bit more detailed version of the angel that was coming up when she was dead. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Oh, my God. That's good. I know. And she's wearing a little heart on her chest. Tidbits. Yeah, because she's like got lots of heart. Super good. On her chest. And then, whoa, what's this? You've gone blue a little bit in this last one. Oh, oh. she is very sexy in this one. Being and wearing naked. no shirt. And that, Sasha doesn't like that. Seeing... Her dad's perspective on his mom as a sexual object freaks him out, which is kind of kooky and weird. Well, I mean, it's dude. No one wants to imagine their parents really. No, doing I don't want to think about that. Yeah. Although it must no. have happened at least once. <laughs> yeah. It's we have brothers now. and sisters, so. I don't want to think about this anymore. And then on the next side, you see <laughs> Sasha's like, huh? <laughs> and the dad has those lines again. Why does the dad have those lines? Well, that's the psychic energy still chilling I mean, there. It looks like psychic a little lingers. lightning bolt coming down from that cloud. I'm still confused yeah, by this. You know what? There's, there is a lot of... I did I per perhaps put a little bit too much psychic energy. Nah. I, just a made it a little okay. busy. Yeah, okay. Okay, it's not only normal for him to be freaked out, but then he moves away from home because of that, <laughs> which seems a little harsh. Huh. I mean, Wait his dad is just a man, a lonely man. Why does he have to, like, <laughs> dad's yeah. not a pervert for... I know. Yeah, he's like, he's like, dude, son, come on, let me, come back here. Let me just tell you about the birds and the bees. I, I mean, me, it happens. you got to understand, your mom was a very attractive woman like that, and your son's like, I got out of here. I got to go. I'm out of here, and... 
the dad's probably just like, oh, well, all right, I guess the son needs to leave home yeah. at some point. No big deal. I lost my wife, and now I'm losing my son. Don't know why. Yeah, hmm, just walked out. Sad. Weird. It's like lots of sub game full of sad stories. Now, this is called Mia's Adventures, and it's actually her adventures with Sasha. So it's kind of like Mia and Sasha's adventures. Together. Cool. Together, yeah. As they are in this first picture, which shows a lot of the, like, kind of, like, the style that we always wanted for the Psychonauts, which was, like, a little bit like Man from Uncle. Right. That map in the background. Mm hmm. And all the futuristic jets. Yep. Like, flying everywhere, confusing like crazy. <laughs> Just... That's yeah. just, I mean, dude, they're, they're just they're flying all over the place, these planes. Look at that. And some of them are transparent. Some of them are like Wonder Woman jets. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just because of the lighting. You would think an organization that had the ability to teleport with their minds would not be so jet-based. Well, I mean, you can't. You can only teleport so far, right? Is that a rule with these guys? I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, some psychic people can like teleport anywhere they want. In the entire world? Or the universe. Jeez Louise. Well, you know what? They also have to create, um, with Psychonauts probably, is you know, a good sense of style. They want to have a good, they want to yeah. look good to everyone else mm -hmm. and have uh, you know, a lot of respect as far as it goes. So mm -hmm. jet, Jets mm -hmm. is a real slick way of flying around. Speaking of style, I like how this is one of those uh, vaults where Mia has a different outfit on every slide. Yeah. Are these based on real outfits? Because that has, like, she's got the rings going on. Uh, no, I don't think so. They're just uh, based on her. Yeah, you got a secret fashion designer. I know, man. In the next one, she's wearing like a chessboard outfit. Oh, that one! I'll bet you that one is a real one. With like lace-up stilettos. Yeah, I don't know. If that's but that's the, the perfect style. outfit when you um, are psychically defusing a bomb that a bank manager or mayor is tied to. <laughs> right. That's that's your outfit for doing that for sure, and d doing it while Sasha is t psychically throwing a little snidely whiplash out the window. I think he's bringing him back. He's pulling him like he went out and picked him up and pulled him in through the broken window. I think because it's broken, yeah, he already jumped out and he's bringing him back. Like, hey, get back here, little guy. Yeah, yeah. these guys are a good pair. And then on this next slide, she has a little man in her head. What's oh, that mean? It's true. Why does she have uh, a little man in her head? That's his, her little sidekick, her little dude. Like he, he's a helper? Yeah, yeah. He sends, um, she sends him out to kind of just like uh, go lay the land. and. But yeah. but she has a psychic, like she's pickpocketing a key from a guy in a turban. Right. And then Sasha is uh, lifting some microfilm, right? Microfilm or is that a candy bar? Uh, a razor? It looks like a razor. It's <laughs> yeah, it's a um, it's a candy bar. It's a little yeah. microfilm. Maybe it's a razor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that guy <laughs> just heard a super funny joke. He's like, ah. I know. Th that's the thing. Everyone's laughing like crazy at this party. Yeah. This it's, it's is like there's so much laughter going on at this party that it, they they can do a lot of pickpocketing unnoticed. It's like the funniest yeah. party ever. And that's a great outfit that she has on with a little, like, crazy necklace in the... Yeah, he they can, can go anywhere. There's nowhere they can't go. I feel like uh, Sasha kind of overdid it, but... <laughs> I like how Sasha's doing uh, the psychic pose while holding a martini. He's got his two fingers out. Oh, Even though he's yeah. holding the martini. <laughs> oh, yeah. He is, that's true. Does he have, like, yeah. a spool there? I gotta say, dude, it gets pretty confusing up there around his uh, hand. <laughs> I could critique myself. Hey, you know what? Hands are hard. Hands, Hands are, are hard. And here is another great outfit. This is more like a skirt with a... It looks like she's wearing... Is that Sasha's turtleneck? Oh, oh. my God. Scandal. What's she doing with <laughs> Sasha's... No, that's a different collar. Word and she's it. psychically blasting the propeller off a helicopter, uh, which I think will kill the pilot and all those men in the cage. Well, the pilot's not a big deal. He's a bad guy. But the cage... You're right. Yeah. She's probably got a plan. Yeah, the um the guy in the one guy in cage is like, um, 
Excuse me. Um, <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yeah. Perhaps this is not the best idea. Uh, what is the uh, plan B if we fall to our deaths? <laughs> yeah. Sasha's obviously uh, just off screen about to catch them all. He's holding it. Well, you know, I, I, I mean, my, I'm envisioning she probably would create, like, a little, one of her little bubbles below him and bounce him. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. That's true. But, I mean, she has the option of just psychically telling that pilot to land. She could have just nicely, like, hey, land. Well, right? wait, does that work? You just tell bad guy to do something and they'll do it? She's how, got works? mind control, and I mean, we never did that in the game, so maybe. Yeah. Maybe she couldn't. But, I mean, I, there are probably other options before she blasted the propeller off. She could have jumped in his mind, solve his problem, and then <laughs> <laughs> and then take over. And he'd be so pleasant yeah. that he would She didn't have land. time for that. She had to quickly jump in her bikini and get in a boat. Oh, yeah. And float this other boat. Is that what she's doing? <laughs> yes. She's, and the girl with the it. pillbox hat is is noticing, but the <sighs> guy driving the Dude, those, boat doesn't notice. Those are um, scuba masks. Oh, that's right. The scuba masks. I thought it was like a little sailor hat, and Sasha has a little sailor hat, too. Yeah. No, they're scuba masks. Yeah, but scuba yeah, maybe masks. they're sailor hats. Why not? Not. But see, Wait, is Sasha wearing a parachute? That's his uh, his like little air tank for him to breathe because he's scuba diving. They just got in the boat. He's scuba diving. <laughs> yeah. Oh. They, they, that's how they got in, into the boat from scuba diving. He's yeah. making a little psychic upward motor. Yes. To right. propel his boat really far. Which is what and she's picking up that whole boat in front of her. Dude, man, they were that was this is their hey, this is their heyday, the peak of their high energy. Mm-hmm. So they they were able to do a lot of stuff, man. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. guy has no idea, dude. That dude, the bad guy just thinks he's doing a sweet jump. <laughs> Little does he know. And now uh, Mia is dropping in Mission Impossible style to uh, a little room full of seals, like angry seals. Dude, those are alligators, bro. <laughs> oh, oh God, he's, uh, I was misled by the fact that they look like seals. Well. No, uh, they're to- it should be a telltale. Uh, no. They got sharp. T- I see the sharp teeth now. Right, dude. Seals, and they're in the sewers. Who ever heard of seals in the sewers? Yeah, it's impossible. Dude, this and is... so there is that the mayor again, the bus- the business guy from the first bomb scene. Uh, who? Yeah, could be, dude. Oh it wait, might... that's the president, because on that little globe uh, it says, "Prez, Prez, Prez," and he he's got the little squiggle next to his head that means he's stupid. Yeah, he's all. It means he has nothing in his brain. He's like, it's like. And a, Sasha's like, "Hold still, sir. Don't walk forward. I know you're really stupid right now, but just hold still." Yeah, his other hand is holding on to him. He's like, "But let's look down together. Make sure she's doing it right." And she's levitating with one hand, and the alligators are coming. Just come a little bit lower. Just a little bit lower, because they could probably jump a little bit. Right. And is she's it? not scared by the fact that the pedestal says. Uh, no touch. <laughs> that should have deterred her for sure, but gosh, she's brave. Oh, I like it because that's like the honor system because they have the big metal door and then they have like all the alligators and then they have the gold, no, I mean the glass globe over the brain. But in case all those things don't work, they have a little honor system note just to guilt trip you into not stealing it. They're <laughs> saying, no touch. Uh, no touch. If the note had said, please don't touch, I bet Mia would have listened to it, but it was kind of rude and brusque and just said, no touch. Dude, because it's a lazy labeler, dude. Lazy labeler does a lot of leaves a lot of pleasant words out. Doesn't even say the whole entire president's name. That sounds like a good tongue twister. The lazy labor lawyer leaves a lot of lessons out. <laughs> lazy labor leaves a lot of lessons. Yeah, I can't say that. The jumping off of a building. Yep. And Mia it looks like she just pressed the detonator. I think she blew that up. Boom. Mm-hmm. And she's pretty calm about it, but Sasha's. He's got a bad part in his hair. Freaking out. His curls have been straightened, which always makes him upset. One foot is small and blackened, perhaps from the explosion. (laughs) (laughs) That's sad. Oh, but then she lands right on top of him, and she looks uh, all happy. Happier than she ever looks. Ooh, and she's embarrassed. They're both a little embarrassed. Do you see the shading? Because her clothes were blown off. Wait, what? No, she has daughter's clothes on. Yeah, she does still have her clothes. I was trying to make it a little better. I was thinking we could fix it later. Okay. In post. Fix it. The clothes have been blown off. I could paint so out totally the embarrassed. Yeah. Oh, my God, they're embarrassed. I wonder what happens after this slide. 
Do we show it? Do we show what happens? Do they make out? Nope. That's the last slide. Hey, maybe it's open. perhaps the um everyone would want to know. Um, do you think they have ever made out? I I think uh that's outside of the the uh, narrative uh, delivered in the game, so I don't think you can find out. I know. I just think he might have a hunch. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say. It's a secret. Huh. Dang, dude. Someday, someday we'll make a game about it. Someday. I gotta look through your diaries. The Sasha Mia kissing game. Mia's children. Now this is, I warning you, no spoilers, but it's kind of sad. Is this sadder than Sasha's? It's the saddest thing in the game. Uh, I think you're right, dude. Depending on your sense of humor, you might think it's pretty funny. Okay. Okay, let's see how it goes. So, here's Mia, and she's reading a book of love to a room full of children. This is the coziest of orphanages. I assume this is an orphanage. Or else she just has a lot of kids. It's called Mia's children. These might be her children. Wow. No, it's an orphanage. It's an orphanage. Come on. She's wearing a nurse outfit. And uh, and there's a little tiny, tiny baby in a cradle. And there's a girl on a hobby horse. And there's a little boy in a hoodie. Why is he wearing a hoodie to bed? Does he have lice? Or is that like a... That's like his security blanket, dude. He loves his hoodie. He might not have a top of his head, actually. Now, here she is. And this is the very first time I think you see Mia wearing the same outfit in two slides. She's wearing the same thing she wore. Because she's wearing a uniform. Oh my god, maybe that's why she wears so many outfits. Because she used to wear a uniform every day. That could be, dude. Yeah, she yeah, had yeah. Like, a, like a flying nun thing going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she's dishing out... Uh, what do you call that? Porridge. You, that's your Oliver Twist voice. Yeah, that's my So is that actually Oliver, Oliver Twist, like the Oliver Twist right there, getting porridge? Because he's got like a little. Yeah. Well, he's got. Yeah, he came. He he doesn't. He doesn't stay in the in the orphanage, but he comes to visit just to have porridge. Just for the porridge. He comes to visit, yeah. dude. And he that looks like nice the little boy jacket. from uh, Oleander's. Uh, I'm totally imagining that. Forget which about one? it. The what? one on the left. What about which which boy? It looks like the guy that got the uh, the kid with the broken leg who got the math box from Oleander. Oh, yeah, maybe, he, yeah, could be the math He's got kid. all the luck. He's got a broken leg, and then he comes to this doomed orphanage. <laughs> yeah, poor guy. So, poor and guy. They, there's a plaque, there's a plaque on the wall. Do you know what that plaque's what about? Is, uh, well, I see a house and a happy person, and then, no, what's that about? Uh, yeah, I don't know, I thought it's you might something about gardening. <laughs> I didn't draw it. Here she is on the next page, teaching all the children the oo song. <laughs> oh, the oo song. It's one of the favorites from the Orphanage. Now, the last one seemed inspired by Oliver Twist, but this one feels more like the Von Trapp family from Sound of Music. Yeah, do you nailed Am I right? It, Am I right? Is that where it's from? You nailed it. They're doing do. Oh, do. A deer. <laughs> a boop a doop boop. Yeah. You know, you know what else I noticed? I think that might be the same nurse that was uh, hanging out when he was giving math, Oleander was giving math to that kid. Oh my god, no, the one with the comical bra or the yeah. one who had the hips? Oh yeah, you're like, right. But she's wearing a modest outfit. Oh no, fire! What? Well, Mia just stepped out for some cabbage and celery oh. and she comes home and her orphanage is on fire and even the teeter totter is on fire and even the sandbox is on fire. <laughs> Everything the is flammable. The sets on fire. This Why is... did they make a sandbox out of <laughs> <laughs> sawdust? <laughs> now she's having major regrets. Why did we build it? Everything <laughs> out of sawdust and wood. Oh, that's terrible. I wonder if this could get any worse. Oh, the screaming children are in her head. This oh, is, I always imagine, the moment she became psychic. Or maybe she was kind of psychic beforehand. But But this is when just all the pain and those children's heads get shoved into her brain and she can't stand it. Yeah. It's like overload, man. Overload. Man, that's a, what made you put such a sad story in the game? Um, I was uh, following orders <laughs> <laughs> from you. <laughs> that, little, that little happy kid in the background. like Everyone's screaming, but that little baby with a little curl is just yeah. singing. Because baby's like, yay, I'm still doing do re me. I have no idea what's going on. Baby. Mm-hmm. And the other mm-hmm. kid in the foreground is becoming a demon. 
Mm-hmm. His face is starting to really Oh, that's get... right. They become these demons in the game, and they whisper to you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Just like that. Mia, help us. Mia. Sad. Dude. Terrible. Check. Curly hair, curly hair girl. Um, her her hair is is smoking, is smoking, <laughs> <laughs> turning into scales. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably really symbolic. This is let's not look at this anymore. This is depressing me. Yeah, this I'm is sad. Depressed. And you know what the thing about the game? This is like a reward. Like you find this after hunting around the level for a long, it's like your reward is this image of burning children. Some people get pumped on depressing stuff. Some people, <laughs> yeah. Like goths probably love this. <laughs> hey, what? Yay, goths! You know Yay. what? It's gonna go Here's your to reward. You. Good, <laughs> good playing. You won. Rasputin's getaway. Now, what is Rasputin getting away from here? His, his life in the circus. Yes, this is his backstory. He is uh, from a family of acrobats, which we see here doing an elaborate trick on the stage, mm-hmm. the Aquados, and he is on the very, very top, uh, but he's uh, focusing on his psychic abilities, not his acrobat's abilities. He's levitating a tiara off his sister's head. Yeah, and the dad is honestly is, is a little bit... He's like, Mur, not that again, not with the mumbo oh, jumbo with the head stuff. Because he doesn't like that because there's this curse that gypsies... No, wait. Psychics. He doesn't like psychics because the fortune like tellers of the circus put a curse on his family. On psychics. Not sidekicks, but psychics. No, not sidekicks. He, he doesn't have any feelings about sidekicks. Okay, all right. He you know, doesn't he, like psychics. You know who loves it all, though, is that guy in the front. He he's just clapping with that weird it. kind of elbows up clapping that like he's reviewing a movie for the paper. Yeah, he's all splendid. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a pretty good trick. Yeah, dude, I know, man. I would be impressed. Mm-hmm. I would be impressed. Mm-hmm. And um, we don't explain who that figure on the left is, that mysterious figure with the mustache. You don't have and any I'm not going to explain it here either. It's a mystery. See here on the next slide, that mysterious figure hands the boy a pamphlet. Oh my god. And while everyone else is taking a bow, he gets his pamphlet. What do you think it's a pamphlet for? Uh, Hawaii. We don't explain it in this slide. The next slide is a, the family is working out, and they're a very f- strong family. They're all lifting. Dude, I know, man. Like 200 pounds on one arm. Dude, even the little baby. And the, the little baby is, uh, wait, is there a baby? Well, oh, that little, the mohawk kid with the unitard? Yeah, yeah, I guess he's not a baby. He's just the smallest dude. What kind of acrobat wears a mohawk? This yeah. quado. How'd you come Quados. up with that? Uh, I know it's pretty uh, thinking out of the box, but it's just, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I just nailed that one. I don't know. <laughs> it's really punk rock. <laughs> and then we cut in close. You finally see this. Oh, it's a Coach Oleander Whispering Rocks pamphlet that is when he says that that was what was written on the inside of the pamphlet. This is the pamphlet he was talking about. And he is just so sparkly-eyed about it. Yeah, this is the, these are the Raz's best eyes in the game, I think, right here. I spent a lot They're of time. huge. I know, man. They're beautiful. I have just beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> if you do say so yourself. Hey, man, I, d- I didn't create him, man. He, uh, <laughs> he was born with these eyes. Yeah, and this is what he... Um, he where he gets the idea of going to... Whispering Rock Psychic Summer Camp. But his dad doesn't approve, as you see here. The dad just rips Uh, it apart, uh, tears it apart, which makes you wonder how he found out how to get there because the pamphlet is gone. Well, he taped it together. Psychically. Psychically taped it together? Psychically. Or he memorized it psychically, which I guess you call memorization. You don't have to be psychic to memorize something. Uh, every, Every kid can psychically remember things. That would be like a, a kind of boring psychic skill if you just have the psychic <laughs> power of memory. <laughs> yeah. I can I'm look a... at something and then close my eyes and then I can tell you what it was. I use I use memory. I'm the, I'm going to use memory on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the dad, he has to tear it apart in order to summon the strength to do it. He locks his elbows, I notice. Boom, boom, boom. Mm, yeah. To get super stiff arms in order to tear it apart. I'd like to see that animated. Mm-hmm. Be like all that mm-hmm. looks so cool. Look at and the f- family's bummed. I guess everyone's uh, yeah. bummed. Everyone's sad. 
Raz is so mad by this. He's like, I'm sick. That's the last straw, Dad. You've torn up my last pamphlet. I'm out of here. I'm going to go steal this pony. Steal the pony. Now, does the pony live in this house alone? Because there's smoke coming out of the fireplace. Yeah, he's cooking. It implies that the pony made a fire. Like, he put the wood in the fireplace. Um, Yeah, yeah, he could. Or he could have a lover. Or, well, yeah, that guy in the poster looks like he lives there, too. But then Raz gets away with the horse in the next slide. So what happened to the guy? Did Raz murder the trainer of the horse? Unknown, unspoken. Unknown, unspoken. Up to the player to decide. Huh. He gets away on the little tiny pony. Which is still kind of cruel because the ponies is smaller than a dog. Raz could probably run faster than that pony. You don't, don't know. You do, I don't know. You don't know about this pony. I mean, look at look at Raz's leg length compared to that that tiny horse's legs. I mean, yeah. I know he's got four of them, but he's it seems you, like a lot of weight to put on a tiny yeah, horse. Yeah, like but that. yeah, but dude, you you've seen little dogs walk next to big dogs, right? Their legs just go <laughs> like a million times faster. I have seen little dogs walk next to big dogs. You've seen that, that right? Doesn't, I mean, that doesn't real. mean they can bear a lot of weight. Maybe he just looks large because of you know what? Mm. For foreshortening. Foreshortening makes yeah. his head look big in this picture. You're right, dude. Foreshortening perspective. Now he arrives at Whispering Rock Psychic Summer Camp, and you get to see the outside of this uh, fence, which I really I, w- I wanted to show the outside of the fence because you never get to see the outside of the fence in the game. Mm-hmm. So here it is. All your dreams come true. There's the fence. All the dreams. And Logger guy has just dropped him off. I guess that was yeah. his last leg of his journey. He's like, hey, here, see you later, kid. And Raz is like, he doesn't care. Yeah. And the guy's like, well, bye. Are you going to say bye? Because I'm, I'm just going to go then. Yeah I, guess, yeah, I guess I'll just be on my way. Um, see you later. It was good just, talking to you. Yeah, it was. I'll just leave you here in the dark. Yeah, you're going to be okay, I guess. I mean, Gate looks locked, but just, oh, well. Uh, He's at camp. The game can begin. <laughs> Yeah. This is moments before the game starts. The world shall taste my eggs. This was um, kind of confused some people, which mm. I don't know why. Yeah, this is one of the more obvious ones. You drew it. Were you confused by it when you drew it? Um, no, I, I knew exactly what I was doing. <laughs> Okay, why don't you tell me what we're looking at here on this first slide? Well, I know exactly what this was. This was eggs on grass. Why are the eggs on grass? Oh. oh I don't know. Who, <laughs> this is see, this is in the game you think I think I think you think. I think you think this is still at Raz's mind, but it's really the coach's mind because right. he was fell asleep on his radio, which broadcasts his psychic thoughts all over camp and it interfered with Raz. Even though Raz was deep under ground, somehow it got down there and interfered with his brain tumbler experiment. And this is the coach's plan to steal brains, uh, which has been turned into a metaphor in his mind. Right. This is one of the only... Well, this is the most drastic of metaphors. I don't think we have anything even close like this. A lot of metaphors in the game. It's basically (laughs) like a poetry textbook. So these eggs represent what? Uh, This represents the children, the psychic children. It's like a breeding ground. It's like an incubator. Yeah. The camp, the camp. itself is like a incubator oh, nice. for brains. And the oh oh they hatched. Look at that. One of the brains hatched. Yep. See, the, there is there it is the little cashew. And the little cashew jumps out. Now what does a cashew symbolize? Well, um, it's just a um a, br- a poorly drawn brain. I think it's nice that you went to all the effort to uh, draw a new sun for this one because some people would have just <laughs> copied the old sun over. But if you look at the sun through all these vaults, it actually animates every frame. Oh, that's interesting. That's true. And yeah. the grass is different. Wow, I really pull Some of the all rays, the, stops. the rays that even move out away from the sun. Yeah, you pull out all the stops. I would like to see this animated. Maybe someone could maybe help us out. Do some yeah. animate do this. Some animation. Now the the okay, it's not a cashew, it's a brain. Just it's a brain. Can, we do, it jumps out and he walks down the street. And it looks a little bit like a um a bee, like he's got a little stinger, but it's a, it's really a brain, right? No, it's definitely yeah, it's definitely a brain, but it's but it's supposed to mean something else. It's a kid. Well, it's a kid's brain. It's a kid's brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It walks to the edge of the shore and it meets a helpful fish, which is obviously symbolic of the lungfish, Linda. 
Mm. You right. see the right, mm -hmm. and it's got big puckering lips. Yep, and in a different color, a different sun. Yeah, another another great Scott Campbell sun. <laughs> and the um, <laughs> the uh, the lungfish helps the brain. The brain jumps on its back, and goes across the lake. Because <laughs> the lungfish. Why are you laughing? Well, because we're just. I'm, well, nothing. We're just telling the story of it. No, no, no. That's cool. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going across the lake. He's going across the lake. Yeah, well, you know, this is definitely a metaphor because um, this isn't exactly how the lungfish brought the kids across the lake. No, he ate the kids. Yeah, so this isn't exactly right. This isn't exactly right. Yeah. Slightly. No, and it's not, and this looks a lot more like a fish than the actual lungfish. The lungfish was walks. It doesn't even swim. Oh, uh, yeah, right, right. Yeah. What you're just no wonder people were confused. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. And then it gets to the insane asylum here, which looks a lot like a amusement park of some kind. Yeah, this is awesome. This makes me totally want to go to a insane asylum. Look how sad the fish is seeing the brain go away. The fish is like, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, are you sure you want to stay, stay with here? me? And then he gets to the asylum, which is kind of uh, uh, somehow foreshadowing Meat Circus, I think. Oh, this whole thing? Yeah. Well, look yeah, at the... Carmel. There's even a dude at the ticket office kind of waving, saying... Yeah, hey. happy. Who is that guy? Oh, Mystery. Dude. I don't know. He jumps into a teacup, which is kind of a combination of the teacup ride at Disneyland, but on a roller coaster, which would not be safe at all. Yeah, that would not be safe. Yeah, wow. You know, th but that's... Hmm. And they're it even spinning. Like... See that one? You can see by the motion lines. Yeah. It's, it's either he's spinning or it's three ghosts in a cup. Oh, that might be the haunted house ride at Disneyland. So this, I see this three Disney. ghosts yeah. in a cup, and that's totally unrelated. Just a coincidence. I'm surprised that they haven't made a roller coaster like this. It seems like you could totally do it, and it would be no, pretty. No, you sl slide right out. You just slip on any corner. You just whoop, slip out like a. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, look at that one. Can... It's even getting air in the background. That one <laughs> teacup is actually flying. Yeah, those things are are getting some air. But I feel like like the real things. You could just strap the person in really good. And so he won't move, and then just like the thing has, is on a little pole, I think it could work. Yeah. And I would, I would, th I would like, because I already kind of feel like I'm gonna throw up from the teacups. Oh, I see what you're saying. So this would be like a roller coaster that would contain your own vomit if you threw up. That's the great thing about being in a teacup is it just fills up. Oh God, gross. I, what's so great about <laughs> being in your teacup with your own vomit? <laughs> Here now, the, now the brains seem to have turned evil. Because they're really, Whoa. they're not just evil here. They they actually have noses, which the noses make them look really sinister. They're like really, oh yeah, mad. And their power is emanating from their head, and it's really pissing off those skeletons down there. And it calls her a whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, don't stop shooting me with your brain. Yeah, I don't know what the big deal is, dude. I don't know why they need to kill off all the skeletons. Yeah, this is, that's the kind of twist ending of this one because I thought it was going really well. It's really happy. There's a roller coaster, and now apparently the teacups are destroying an entire city. Yeah, hey man, hey man, they have gone through a lot. They they were in a teacup and on a roller coaster, probably throwing up a storm, and they're just like, I just can't handle. It. I can't believe you made me do that. World. Oh wait, is that them throwing doing? up? They're not shooting something. They're actually just throwing up. Oh, that could be. That's so gross. Throw up out of their head. So we, we've <laughs> talked a lot about throw up on this. In the, in this That's one. the coach. So that makes a lot simpler. The coach's evil, evil plan was to throw up on some skeletons. I don't know why Raz was so dead set on stopping him. Yeah, why not? Skeletons, that's what skeletons need. Seems that's what they ask for. Yeah, they're like, oh, ah. Uh. In fact, that one is probably a little bit pumped. His arms are up. He's like, yeah. Well, I think we've them. explained this one pretty well now. I think if there was any confusion before, <laughs> people get they understand that this is all about a, cash, yeah. a cashew that barfs on uh, skeletons from a teacup. <laughs> These vaults tell a story about a beautiful friendship that started between uh, Dr. Caligosto Loboto, or Lobato, as he's called, and the lungfish named Linda. Mm. It's another love story in the game. You sound sp suspicious. No, no, no. This is the this is the one of the strongest buddy stories in history. Yeah, I <laughs> think so. <laughs> this is, and it's very. It's based not just on love, uh, but on science, because you can see in this first picture, 
the lungfish is living underground in a uh, uh, bubble of mucus. That's I I know you you can't I don't know if you can tell from the drawing, but that's mucus. Because I looked that up when we started the game of how lungfish live, and they create these little mucus bubbles, and they live in dried out lake beds. And so here he is, like a fun science fact for the kids. It's enriching. Today, yeah, super enriching. They would call that enriching content. Yeah. So he's got a tiny television set, and he's just right. uh, kind of zoning out. Which was totally... Um, or she. Which was how it was, right? I mean, in the science books, they had little television sets in their mucus. Is that... Oh, well, I mean, just some... Uh, the, the art. I can't <laughs> speak for the art being scientifically <laughs> accurate, but... Yeah, so, took a few liberties. Is that, is that the same t- uh, TV set that uh, she used as bait later in her angler? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably. Probably because that, like, I mean, that looks like the same size relative to her bigger body. Because she gets a little bigger. Spoilers. And then she's uh, scooped up in a net by Lobato, uh, who you can recognize by his fancy spats. Why does Lobato have spats? <laughs> Is that what you call uh, those? Those, like, stirrup pants? I guess those are stirrup. Yeah. He's got stirrup pants. Why does he wear stirrup pants? I think because uh, real evil doctors are super into those. Because they hate when they're let their pants ride up their calves. Yeah, they. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They they don't want their their pants to get into all their experiments and stuff. Like most people are concerned about keeping their pants up, but this guy is concerned about keeping his pants down. Like they will go no higher than this. <laughs> right. Well, dude, he's, he doesn't want to track. He doesn't want to track any of these this mud and junk into his. Well, how, does Lab. That, how does that help with the? How do the pants help with that? Well, because it tucks, it, it covers the. Well, it doesn't get on the pant cuffs. Okay, I think there's room in this app. We could talk about this for like an hour. Lobato brings the oh the poor lungfish is up in some experimental goldfish bowl, which he doesn't need because uh, they can breathe in the air. Did you know that? Another science fact. Oh, really? Holy yeah. crap. Well, you know what? I don't think this is really filled with water, though. Oh, it might just, just be a bowl. That would make sense, because he's got all those electrodes in him, and the bottles and his shower cap, and his tiny, tiny metal claw. Yep. Little, me- little metal claw. Longfish doesn't look that bummed. He just is like, uh... You promise this isn't going to hurt? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said it's not going to hurt. He's, I trust you, Caligosto. Yeah, do what you... Okay, you think this is going to give me a nice little yeah. do? Hairdo? And the coach, though, is really uh, excited by this. He's like, yeah! <laughs> In the background. And he's got, like, one eye. Does he have a monocle? Yeah, that's weird, dude. Does he have... I can't remember if he had... I think he does. I think he has a monocle. Kind of like uh, like, uh, like Colonel Clink in Hogan's Heroes. He had a, uh... oh, yeah, he's just... oh, he's super Hogan's Heroes. Yeah, totally. Everything sure. we do is based on Hogan's Heroes. Oh, but the experiment looks like it went awry, or else was more successful than... Look up, Lobato's totally psyched, and Oleander can't believe it. He's got the little lines of disbelief coming off his forehead. Dong! Uh-huh. I'm not sure what he's expecting. He's like... Did he actually did he pump a bunch of air into the lungfish? How did he make him so big? With electricity? Just like electricity made him big? Well, dude, I think it like pumped um, musc- muscle spasm juice oh, in that... there. You know, oh, it's it like that. Him- it's kind of like little bits of uh, adrenaline of muscles and adrenaline and adrenaline made him big and, and somehow stapled ster- a bunch of metal uh, sheet metal onto his head. That's yeah, that's a classic uh, Frankenstein design. I don't think Frankenstein had sheet metal on his head though, did he? Oh, he doesn't. Like stapled to the outside like that. Well, <laughs> I'm sure there's there's been other <laughs> we, Frankenstein monsters. We took monsters. it a little bit farther than Frankenstein. <laughs> I mean, he had bolts. I guess that's where you had things. But I think, I think you know, there's certain parts where you're like, oh, you know, I gotta put some, do some extra junk here and here. Yeah. So you put a metal plate yeah. over it. Totally. It's just easier. It's just easier than stitching. And a cool bracelet. She's got like a little cool metal bracelet. Okay, so this experiment though, like, what exactly was he trying to? Do? Was he just trying to make him a more badass monster I... and um, a fish and like a more enhanced fish, like a smarter fish? I I think the coach really wanted to create a, a cover for his kidnapping of the, of the kids, like a story that uh, he could blame it on. Like uh, there was a monster. He's trying to create a lake monster. You know, you know, every summer camp has a story about a, a some sort of like hatchet Annie or some sort of scary thing that lurks in the woods. 
Oh, yeah, right, right. We had our lake monster that came out and ate kids. So he actually made a real one that was under his control that he could actually use, use to, to ferry kids across the lake to the his secret hideout. See? Okay, so he wanted, he did want it to be grotesque. He just wasn't prepared how grotesque it was actually going to be. He just, yeah, he probably thought Lobato was a nut job and was just faking it. And then uh, it worked beyond his wildest uh, dreams, and here we see Lobato and the coach sending him off on his first mission. And they're full of instructions here because Lobato's holding up a brain, so he's like, go get a brain. And the coach is holding up pictures of children. Say, go get the brains from children. They're being very explicit, but I don't think Linda's paying attention. She's just like, oh, and just wandering off. Just don't get my eyes wet. As long as my eyes don't get out of the water, I'm fine. <laughs> He's like, wait, don't you want to take these photos with you? No. These are the exact kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think he took our direction very well. I have a good memory now. You pumped an amazing memory into me. I, I can remember <laughs> all things. But he didn't bring the... Uh... He didn't bring the jar either. There's a jar there for him to put he, the brains. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't. Well, he doesn't extract the brains. He just brings the whole kid back. That's right. Spits That's him out right. on the shore. That's right. That's and then right. goes back and gets another kid. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, but you know, I realized we never really returned Linda to her original size. That's what we should have done in the game, because it's kind of sad that she's all big forever. But yeah, but maybe she, but maybe she, um, you know, discovers like good things about it, like in her new life. She's like, ah, because she she's kind of into up. certain aspects. She can get into well, restaurants she... easier. <laughs> Wait, she can. Well, yeah, she shows it seems up. Seems like it'd be harder. Well, well she's certain bigger. certain restaurants, obviously. Ah, uh, right, certain restaurants. Would she just get, let's just say she gets her way a lot more in general. Yeah. Oh right, 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 right. No, but I think all the kids like love horsing around with her and stuff now. Oh yeah, she's like the camp mascot now. She oh yeah, she probably has her own camp <laughs> or her own class. Yeah, like a like a knitting or watching TV or how to breathe air. Actually, her skills aren't that in demand, but how to, how fishing. She could teach fishing because yeah, she yeah, how to set bait. This one is called Lungfish Opolis. Under Siege. That was exciting. Uh, I did that one. If you did, dude, friendship. This is inside the uh, lungfish's mind and how the lungfish named Linda sees uh, how the coach implanted a, uh, a control mechanism into her mind. Mm -hmm. Right? So yep. you got that? That's true. Okay. So they're pretty. She inside her mind, uh, her thoughts and everything about her are represented by these little people, the lungfish citizens. Yeah, they're yeah. just happy little simple creatures playing "Ring Around the Rosie," I think, in the corner. Yeah, "Ring and Around the Rosie." They're dancing with crabs, which was a um, was a Kevin Costner movie, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the Kevin Costner lungfish right there. <laughs> to the less popular sequel to "Dances with Wolves." Yeah, dancing with crabs, <laughs> dancing with and crab. then they're celebrating their special holiday where they give each other fried eggs on the end of sticks. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, and those guys is going good. They're sitting up top of the Lorette rock playing the waving game. I like to think one of them is trying to convince the other one to sit on his rock. Like, hey, come over. This is the cool rock. Come sit on my rock. And then the other one's like, no, no, no. This is the cool rock. Come over here. The, this is the better rock. And the middle Except guy's the one, like, the one uh, middle guy's pretty yeah. sure he's, he's not on the cool rock. Yeah, he's having second thoughts and third thoughts. About his his rock, the guy in the foreground, and the, the, see the guy in the foreground, and the guy in the middle ground, they're both super pumped on that uh, fried egg too. Yeah, yeah. Who wouldn't be? Yeah. Uh, and then who shows up but Coach Amra? Coach Amra. I don't know why the coach chooses the uh, the guys of a rubber suited Japanese monster movie villain, but um, I think he just liked Ultraman. He liked watching that show as a kid, so yeah. he chose he chose that guy to come. And you can tell that it worked here because you see all the lungfish citizens bowing. They're enchanted. And, uh, They're enchanted. Oh, enchanted. you're on this. Okay, you jumped to the other side so fast. Yeah, it was fast. You don't, yeah. you don't even hang out on this side at all. No, well, you want to look at that pervious one? No. <laughs> the not pervious. Busy. I feel like. There's, uh, not, there's, he's, there's guys he's holding pointing. up his hand saying, just hold on, no questions until the end of my speech, please. And everybody else. You can see the guy in the foreground. He's like <laughs> raising his hand, like, um, um. What are the health benefits of this new plan? <laughs> the coach is like, no, uh, uh, um, I will explain all that after my big speech. After my big speech. 
I, and one by one, come up and give me five. <laughs> That's noble, really noble Coach Amra. But then in the next slide, hint, hint, he puts them all to work. And you see uh, lungfish citizens of all sizes and shapes have to get to work. These guys have to pull a big block down the street. Mm -hmm. And then I think these other guys with the hats on are going to squish them with hammers. That seems mean. Well, they're just picking them up, putting them in places. You think – so they're helping the little guys or are they actually just composited in there? Is it, they're not meant to be different sizes. Well, it's a composite, bro. Good good, know, good right? artwork, bro. Good artwork. Well, but that is what it is. Yeah. And hey. and but you know what the but the um older coach really is that size so I don't know it's really confusing probably in fact the, in fact those is guys really are... an art word I think I just stole that from the last time we tried to record this commentary from mm -hmm. you and now right. I'm using it do you see how that happened mm -hmm. I do you nailed it you nailed it <sighs> so I mean I I think this was super inspired by um by the Great Pyramids the building of the Great Pyramids mm -hmm. slash the skyscraper boom in New York City. Yep. What years would the would that be? We all. Uh, the first one yeah. was. I tried wait. to incorporate a little history. A little history I think to every three thousand three thousand BC was that the. Uh, Great That's pyramids? the first skyscraper boom in New York City. That was the skyscraper boom, uh, and the Great I Pyramids did. were in like the early nineteen hundreds. The thirties. Okay. Even though he's putting the work, everyone's pretty psyched. You can see on the last frame, it's a beautiful now utopia of neon and skyscrapers. Kind of Blade Runner esque, if you ask me. Beautiful, yeah. Blimps, blimps, offered advertising a better life in the off-world colonies, except for that one guy down there, <laughs> who's mm -hmm. a fan of '80s metal. He's wearing a like Rising Star headband. Yeah. And he's saying he's tightening it up because he's so angry. He's pulling it tight, going, oh, "I will never serve you, Coach Hamra. Oh. Never. I hate neon so much. This is the tightest knot. No one will ever get this off my head." Because that's like the part of the lungfish's brain that's like, hey, I don't like this foreign intruder in my mind. Because like, when, some, when you're under hypnosis, there's a part of you that goes along with the program and a part of you that kind of goes like, wait a second. And they're battling it out for control of your mind. Right. But they're living in such an awesome city. I don't yeah, know. But, mm, they won't a really question about, uh, you know, is there such a thing as happy tyranny? Scott, that's kind of a discussion question for later. Yeah. You yeah. can stop this commentary right now and discuss that amongst yourselves and your classmates. Yeah, it sounds good. This is because this, this is used in, as a textbook, right, in classes? Yeah, and then start the projector again when you want to resume the show. Okay, go for it, everyone. Do you think they're still here? Um, I think a couple people might still be listening. I hope they paused it because I don't have anything else to say. Yeah, I think we're done with this one. Yeah. This is all about Boyd and how he gets fired. So here is Boyd's <laughs> name tag. He works for the Cooper organization. Right. Yeah, so um, is it his father's organization? I don't know. I think that's just so you can, when he's down the hallway, you can tell that he's Boyd Cooper without having to read his whole. Although I don't know why they just didn't put his name really big, like Boyd Cooper that's just true. once. Well, it would, work. it would work if they also kind of used a little bit more value contrast. It's real, real hard to yeah, read. Yeah, gray on Google. gray is not great for a name tag. I know, man. But it, it's a night's watch. It's a night watch. So who, who? Uh, yeah. You know. Well, because yeah, who's gonna see him? No one's, no one needs to know his name. The only person who needs to know is the burglars, and they're not gonna need to know anyways because Just, they. Yeah. Here's my name. Remember it in jail. Look how psyched he is here, uh, sitting in his chair, guarding the palm trees and the, um, the twenty dollar coats. Oh yeah, twenty-two dollar section and an important sign. That's really cheap for a coat. That's like old old navy coat for a child. Yeah, well, I think this is like on a desert island or something. Things are pretty cheap on desert island. <laughs> or San Diego. Oh, it's in San Diego. That's right. Palm it could trees. Be in San Diego. Uh, oh, what here? Here, here he is getting fired by um, Lou Grant or someone, a Lou Grant type character. <laughs> oh man. I think he's getting fired because his hat is too loud. <laughs> yeah, keep this <laughs> racket down or you're out of here. There's sort of alarm going off in his hat, and he's getting, yeah, get out of here. He's keep this name tag out of here. I can't even tell what your name is. It's too hard to read. Yeah, and my, mine is much better. Dot, dot, dot. Mine's in, mine's in Morse code. 
That's, yeah, the, that's what the boss said. Why did he take his hat off? I mean, like, Boyd's not wearing his hat. He's hatless, which makes him look weird. And his hat took... His boss took the hat and put it in the garbage for him and handed it back to him. Like, here, free garbage can. What do you mean he, t- he gave it back to him? Well, why, is the, why does the boss have his hat? And why is it in a trash can? Why doesn't Boyd have his hat still? Because, dude, he's firing him, man. He said, uh, give me your... Name your tag hat. and your hat. I'm going to put it in the garbage. I mean, the company must own that hat, really. Yeah, it so does. They might, he should be putting it in the, a nicer place with a. Uh, there's a lot of inconsistency. No, it's here, it's disposable, dude. That's the, the, the thing. name tag. Hey, man, dude, they sell twenty dollar, twenty two dollar coats, man. All, all the, everything's disposable, even the guard outfits. I think he would keep those hats. They have a like a reinforced brim. He's all. Can, he's all, dude. Give me your uh, give me your badge off your hat. Oh, forget it. it. Just give me the whole hat. It's obviously a name brand know. hat too. If you look at it, it's got the Adidas logo right on the front of it. Oh yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Huh. product placement. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So now he's storming away and he's starting to become evil. I think he's being driven evil by that big bat signal up in the sky. Mm. It's like Batman shaped thing. He can't figure out if it's a bat signal or not because the shape. If you, is indiscernible. Yeah. If you look at it upside down, it actually does look like Batman. Like it's got the little cowl with the ears. Oh. Oh yeah, I, I see a big nosed dude about to bite the corner of the of Hernando's. Oh, you're right. I totally see the big nosed guy <laughs> with two little arms hanging down. Well, he's got like a big pimple or something with for the moon. Yeah, he's like ah, pop this. <laughs> oh, Hernando's is the name. I don't know where that came from. I think it was something that the real life character that Boyd was based on said. Because oh, yeah. there was a guy out in the alley outside of Double Fine. He used to sweep up the alley for us. For ten dollars a week, and then he uh, would say things that were interesting that we get used for Boyd, like the thing about yeah. being a rocket with a, uh, a a turtle with a rocket tied to his back. That was all him, and yeah. his obsession with plastics and pelicans was all him. Yeah, and I he used to talk that. about Hernando, and I never knew what he was talking about. So Hernando is just in there, mysterious, yeah. but it all kind of makes sense. So I have a feeling about this next picture about Boyd. He's throwing what looks like a Molotov cocktail. Yeah, but he kind of looks like a fun guy to hang out with here. He looks like he's the life of the party. Well, dude, I mean, like, he's got fired. He's got all the time in the world to just kind of party down and. He's he's loosened he's his tie. Work. Yeah, he's like the he's like the guy you bring to your poker game, and he's like, I'm gonna, you're gonna, yeah, uh, you know. He's the guy you don't want at your poker game. Oh, well, maybe you, you know, bring him. To, I, you bring him to the poker game, and then you're like kind of a little bit sorry. You have to apologize for him a lot. Well, only if he actually burns things. Which but, is, looks like pretty obvious. I think that's his plan. Well, maybe he's dumb, though, because maybe that's just milk, and he's just trying to set fire to milk. Oh, wait, there's a gas can. That's well, Yeah, there's a gas can. But I mean, why, is there, just, why is there a picture of fire on the side of the gas can? Because it's flammable. I guess so. Yeah, I'm trying to poke holes in this, <laughs> but it's pretty, it's pretty airtight. It's pretty airtight. I can't do it. And then look on the end. Look how happy he is. Oh, he's not, oh, he is so pumped. He's so pumped. He's jumping up and down. Okay, I've totally noticed the inconsistency that a big plot hole in Psychonauts altogether. Wow, what? If you look back at the previous picture, the um, milk bottles were on his right, and the trash can was on his left. If you look on this one, the trash can has mysteriously changed position. is now on his right side, and his milk is on the left side. How do you explain that, Scott? Well, if yeah. you look in the previous slide, you'll mm-hmm. see that there's still more milk bottles mm-hmm. in the basket. He still has a lot more work to do ahead of him, which means flinging around stuff, partying. Mm-hmm. So there's a good chance that could end up anywhere. So you're saying time has passed. Time has passed, dude. Time has passed. And maybe a wizard yeah. came and... Actually, yeah, time has passed, actually. Is that definitely a different night than the first night I just noticed because the moon is more crescent. Oh, yeah, it was a full moon when he got fired. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I bet if you were smart, you could actually calculate how many days elapsed in between. Oh, wait, you know what? Unless that is actually the full moon under his body and then that's just a f- flame of from the fire up there see his little he's sitting on the moon <laughs> that's that's really unlikely that it would be that low it'd be so low that it'd be in it's front of the building also i think the moon i think i don't know but i think no you're right that's the right the moon is going in the right direction i keep trying to bust you on these technicalities me, but you've, you've planned everything dude, so well i bring, can't do it yeah man yeah bring it on dude bring it on bring on the inconsistencies i i it's definitely you're tight man Oh, and then sadly, here he is in the insane asylum. All mm. He's hatless, and the lines just kind of accentuate how he's missing his hat. But he also, he's wearing his mm. Ditto's pajamas. His pajamas Ditto. with Ditto marks all over him. Yeah, that, that's... 
he gets to choose his what, what what does he want he wants the ditto pajamas or the parentheses pajamas or the exclamation point pajamas he chose the ditto mark once well i assume it's because there's a really catchy slogan on the top part of the pajamas you can't see and then <laughs> the bottom part he's just saying uh the same as i said before on the top part do <laughs> yeah. you know what i said above on my pajamas Boyd hired again. What? How could he get a job? He's in an insane asylum. That's well, crazy. I, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Let's find out what happens. You're drawing, and it's a drawing of a man drawing, which is pretty heavy. Oh, not, heavy. not that heavy. That goes on but he's doing, he's doing math and conspiracy theories and tic-tac-toe. Yep, tic-tac-toe. Which, and as you can see, he won without even putting anything in the tic-tac-toe. How do you know he won? Because he made that mark through it? He made the mark through down the middle. Yeah. It's interesting. It's very yeah. interesting. I noticed he's not very good at math, though, because he's made a lot of squiggles and plus signs, but not a lot of actual equations. <laughs> well, yeah. This is his equ This is his just the little symbols wall. Except I think behind him he drew an X with one of those fancy squiggles through it, as like like a super fancy X. Oh, yeah, that is fancy. And there's a greater than up, up, up there. And then he's counted to three and made a hash through it as if it was a five, so he's obviously really confused. That's a good oh, yeah. sign of being crazy. Hey, but he he wrote 12 pretty well. It's yeah. not so bad. Yeah, so, and he got busted by a really strange-looking creature back there. Uh, Busted. But do you think coach. it has to do with the fact that he changed his pajamas to stripes? Yeah, well, he's been at the insane asylum level. He's, he's like, he's an extra level up now. He's like a senior patient, probably. Uh, okay, so he graduated. So, did stripe pajamas, stripes. exactly. Apparently, he's on suicide watch because they haven't given him razors because you can see in the next picture, he's really scraggly bearded. Like, he's not shaving. Oh, he is. That's true. Yeah. His so chest or his, his mouth, head. his net chin. It gets worse each picture. See, now he's getting confronted with some milk. Oh. The coach is giving him some milk really threateningly. I know, dude. <laughs> really threateningly. The boy does not know what to make of it. And then... In the third picture, he's got the ultimate uh, scruffy neck. Just his neck, though. Not much on his chin or his mustache. I think Which that is, is all of his chin. Oh, really? And he's drooling. He's drinking milk and he's drooling because he's being hypnotized by uh, cookies with some sort of crazy hypnotic pattern on them. No, that's just peanut butter cookie. It's <laughs> that's the international <laughs> sign of peanut butter. That's a really a specific cookie you made there. I know, man. Is that your favorite kind of cookie? I think it might be one of my favorite types of cookies for sure. But yeah, I love definitely it's just the most suggestive cookie. Yeah, most suggest yeah, it matches his eyes. He's got the same peanut he must have peanut butter eyes, I guess, because of those lines on his eyeballs. I never thought about that. And there's a Hitchcock movie where this person uh goes into a hypnotic trance whenever they see parallel lines because of some horrible skiing accident, I think. Remember that? In it has like a the one that has like the Salvador Dali sequence. That's obviously oh, what yeah. you're making a reference to. The, yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, I think it begins with an S. Spellbound, Spellbound, right? Spellbound, yep, I haven't seen uh, it. But that's obviously a reference to Spellbound, even more <laughs> eerie by, made by the fact that you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, other, dis other disturbing thing in this picture is the wart on Boyd's uh, pointer finger. That's just gross. Oh, yeah. No, uh, it's a just wart on his pointer it's, finger. It's just a knuckle. It's just a knuckle. It's, it's a professional grade drawing. I like in the next drawing how he's he's taken the cookies and the milk. He's been totally hypnotized, and he's like ex he's chewing, and then then he gets suspicious when it's like a uniform in a Manila envelope with a picture of a milk carton on it. Yeah, he's like, he's like what all it takes so, is hmm. like, what what hmm. <laughs> what I would like to be a guard again, but yeah, I don't know. that's his exact outfit. Yeah, he he seems like he's getting a little normal now. He's not as insane. Perhaps that milks is calming him. Yeah, it's calming him down. He's even got a little less of a beard. Yeah, he's he has stubbles going away. That's a that's miracle milk. And his mouth looks looks exactly like a perfect arrow, almost as if it was the sword from the game adventure. Oh yeah. <laughs> that uh huh. Yeah, and it just killed a dragon. That's what his, that yeah. black thing is <laughs> that under. Black thing must be the dragon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so man. the uh, so the coach has implanted a MK Ultra like assassin. Uh, post hypnotic suggestion dormant assassin inside his brain under the persona of the milkman which will hide in his brain until activated 
right. uh, by milk. No, by something. By what's and it will come destroy the evidence of the coach's evil plan in case he needs to d- burn down the asylum someday to cover up his tracks after he makes his army. If something goes wrong with his, I don't know what could go wrong with that plan to create an army of psychic brain tanks, but so it goes wrong. Is all this information in this envelope that he just said? He's, he's got yeah, all that. Inf- yeah, he's got it's all that. Really small. Okay, it's, it's all written really, really down. Small. I don't want him to yeah. forget. That's a lot of stuff for him to remember. And then, and things kind of worked out for him because in the next frame, he's a guard again, pretty happy. Damn. Although not not as happy as he was in the department store. That's true. Yeah, now he's he looks more. It. He really looks more serious. stern. Yeah, he's like, I'm not gonna get fired this time. Yeah, no way, man. I'm gonna guard this gate yeah. like no one's business, even though there's no twenty do dollar jackets. No. Well, there there might be, but I don't know. Just a little doggy door in the gate that um, I think that's where Raz gets through. Yeah, yeah, that's where he goes through there. Or his boy just, he, no, he opens the whole gate and, uh, and burns down these sounds. Spoilers! Oh, that's right. Spoiler. Oh. I like it's like an intricate, it's a very intricate, beautiful uh, wrought iron detail on that fence yeah. until you get up to the very top. Yeah. And then it's just a squiggle. <laughs> yeah. Like that, and that's easy to draw, but that would be so hard to actually make with iron. To actually bend yeah. iron into a squiggle shape, that's, that's really hard. <laughs> well, I think they just found that in a junkyard f- and then just put it there. Someday when they make the big uh, Michael Bay style Psychonauts movie, oh, yeah. huge big budget movie, some poor prop person is going to have to make that squiggle. That's going to be the nightmare. It's going <laughs> to be a nightmare for those but guys. They might th- make this scene in, as a miniature, though. Job security, though. That's true. Just no, like, I'm, like I'm going to insist on all practical effects. I want the entire thing built in a full size asylum. Okay, full sized. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Because we could go to it. That would be awesome. Yeah, we could play around on it like a playground. That would yeah. be cool to make it like, oh man, Psychonauts uh, Amusement Park, and that could be like a total yeah. playground for kids, slide around on it. Yeah, um, <laughs> with real rats. This fault is called Gloria's Cruel Training, which tells the story of her tragic upbringing when her mother got too famous and married a uh, busy manager type guy in the theater and he made her send Gloria off to school. All right. Sad. It's very sad, isn't it? Super sad, dude. So it's kind of like the uh, Peking Opera uh, uh, where they train kids from early age with cruel training. Yeah, that's interesting. I would have loved to have known that was the influence before I drew it. Till did all the drawings, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, yeah. bro. Awesome. I see in that first in that first drawing, uh, the eyes, the windows do look like spooky eyes. Yeah, see, look at those eyes Creepy. are all evil looking. The way, yeah. I mean, the windows, and yeah, and it's creepy. very and I would say it's very inspired by all, all of her twists, just like all yeah. these orphan things are. Is that like the saddest movie you've ever seen? Uh, it's. Dude, it's it's actually uplifting. It's like slightly melancholy, but dude, it always gets me pumped. Like the jams get me really pumped and all. Of yeah, it's got some good songs. Just like the jams that Gloria sings. Okay, good bringing it back. So here we see now. I don't think it's very wise here that um, Gloria's mother is speeding away in the car, but there's obviously some regret on her face, and maybe she's regretting the fact that she's left her daughter alone with what appears to be a witch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She has a huge, huge mouth, and it's full of jagged, shark-like teeth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, cur- and she has curly boots. Like, she has curly boots, which is a, a direct reference to the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah. And she has a nose that looks like she could open a can with it. I know. Really scary lady. Yeah, if you have if you have a can opener head shaped uh, teacher that you're leaving your kid with, maybe don't don't leave it. Don't with leave her there. No. And uh, she's having and regrets for sure, though. She's having obviously having she's regrets. She's still leaving. She's still leaving. And uh, there appears to be a ghost inside the house looking out. Is that a ghost? Uh, God, man, it could be a ghost. A ghost of one of the kids. Oh, man. Not a super threatening scary. ghost. Let's be honest. <laughs> that ghost might be her friend later. And then her cruel training begins, and we see. Her uh, and her classmates being whipped while they're performing uh, some ballet or maybe practicing for a live performance of a Flintstones musical. 
clothes, I guess, because <laughs> they true. seem to be wearing Flintstones type clothes. Right. This orphanage is all about Flintstones plays. I mean, is that is that for Flintstones' like um, shirt that she has on? <laughs> and then that's like yeah. Wilma has a kind of patch like that on her dress. She does she? look like Wilma, dude. Yeah. It's but you know you can already tell in this like uh, like uh, the, the kids are crying. Everyone's pretty weak, but Gloria is pretty strong, dude. Yeah, she's, she's not she's that blunt. Well, let's see if she gets broken. Okay, here she's – now you have to admire the skill. She's playing the piano and whipping the children at the same time. <laughs> and right. it looks like she just whipped that one girl right in the face. That's incredibly violent. Hey, man. That's what happens in, the, in orphanages, I think. We're lucky the, the uh, ratings board did not see this picture of an old lady whipping a young girl in the face. Mm. But you know Maybe what? Maybe she's just coming nearby. There's no blood coming out, so I think that gets past some stuff, right? Isn't just tears rule? coming off. And the thing is that deep down you know that years later these girls will be happy that they were given a skill and taught to sing. That's true. I'm sure they're Don't all pretty you? pumped. I wonder where they all want, what they're all doing now, all these kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then they got whipped while they're watching a movie. That's my favorite one. That's the big punchline there, that they are just <laughs> sitting in a chair and they're still getting whipped. <laughs> There's always <laughs> one it, kid who, at the moment of being whipped, too, in all of these. <laughs> Yeah, like she she whipped that one girl right on the tip of the nose. It looks like <laughs> while she's watching a movie because she maybe wasn't comprehending it deeply enough. Right, and they she's all... whipping to improve comprehension. Yeah, dude. Right. Like she didn't think they were understanding deeply enough the movie about the ballerina, so that she was whipping them to yeah. like comprehend more. <laughs> yeah, understand it. Understand, understand this. deeper. Understand the symbolism. This. It's weird that she whipped that one, but um. Gloria isn't even looking at the movie, so... She yeah, I mean, she should really whip Gloria because she's not even paying attention. But Gloria looks like, at this point, she's not scared. She's more just sad for the teacher. Yeah, she does look that, that way. Yeah, right. She looks like she's just kind of, um... Really? Is this... Is this What's wrong with you? I know, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess that's a thing from Adam's family on the right, too, I just realized. So, um... <laughs> and they're and they're all like, <laughs> and they all, and they all like um, the snap effect is um, very digital looking. I noticed it's all like they're maybe they're robots. Nah, did you not draw that? Did you draw that on the computer? Yeah, I did that on the computer. That obviously was done in Photoshop. Yeah. Spoilers. On the next slide, the, is oh. she t taking off or putting on that flower costume? She's whipping her. <laughs> I think she's whipping her to. Keep her head in the right spot so she can put the darn <laughs> thing on. Well, maybe in her defense, that's the only way to get a head through that little ring is to just put it next to it and then just whip it through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe she's like really good at whipping that like she whips a little bit here and there like to move the head slightly so it's the exact right spot. Yeah. Maybe she's not really she's she's doesn't have complete control of her arms, but she's really good with her. Yeah, whip. that's true. Maybe it's just an extension of her hand and she actually has a tender touch with the whip. And then Gloria is just pouting and walking off. Maybe she almost looks sad that she's not being whipped. Yeah, she most. You know what? Maybe she's she jealous that get, she's not getting whipped as yeah, much as the other kids. Yeah, she doesn't get any of the whipping. <sighs> but she gets the good part. You can see in this next one, she gets the part of like um, Rep uh, Romeo and Juliet. She gets the Juliet part. Wait, what is this play about? This is like <laughs> there's a dog in it. There's hmm. a dog, and then there's a guy with a sword, and he's mm -hmm. getting whipped. Yeah. And then there's a flower. Is this Shakespeare? Uh, yeah, it's one of those Shakespeare ones with uh, dogs, the puppy, <laughs> the puppy flower one. This is relevant to the game because there are dogs that chase you around that are little kids in dog costumes. Right. Do you think anyone noticed that those are little girls in dog costumes, or did they just think they were dogs? I think everyone knew exactly what the design was supposed to be. Because they were drawn so well. <laughs> yeah. But, dude, you know what I also noticed about this particular image? Is that, like, yeah. Gloria was so jealous that she wasn't getting whipped as much that she started whip taking upon herself to whip oh. the kids also with her own hair. You think that's what she's doing with her hair? <laughs> she's actually whipping that poor... She's all, I can be just like you, teacher. She's internalized her uh, tormentor and I become so. her enemy. Like yes. a whole new depth on Gloria I did not even realize. Yeah, that kid's getting from two sides, dude. This is probably the yeah. worst of all the, of all the slides. Which is weird looking back on it because I know this is about it's supposed to be Gloria's cruel training, but really all the other girls are getting whipped a lot more <laughs> than Gloria. She's almost like Teacher's Pet. That would be what we should have called this one, Teacher's Pet. Yeah, I know. Teacher's Pet, right, because she gets the best role. But maybe that was worse because she feels so guilty. She has all this guilt the rest of her life. 
Yeah, that's probably uh, why she went a little bit, a little bit uh, different. And that girl's saying, like, at least you're not playing the dog. It was killing yeah. my knees. This next vault is called... What is it called? Glorious it? Fallen Star. Now here's where we see the payoff for all that training that uh, Gloria resented at the time, probably. But now we see it's made her a big star, and her name is in lights everywhere. Mm -hmm. Gloria Von Guten. Yep, super, super paid off, man. I always uh, I was very proud of that name, Gloria Von Guten. It sounded very, it's fun to say. Very Von Guten. It was fun to say. Yeah, it's good. To, it's hey, good. Everyone knows, and everyone knows what she's inspired by, right? By what? Like, by, by me. By me. <laughs> yeah. My life. She, she, yeah, your life is exactly like. No, Gloria. Gloria is inspired by Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard. We, we did watch that movie before we did this. Yeah. That was exactly. Yeah, I'm ready for I my close up. So. That whole that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Which it's is a good movie. So. If you have not watched that movie, go watch Sunset Boulevard. So good. Yeah. Inspired a lot of this. Yeah. Was she was she called Gloria in that? Yeah. Well, that's Gloria Swanson. Mm hmm. She's mm -hmm, the real lady. Movie facts. <sighs> so, anyways, yeah, these are just a bunch of lights. Boom, do, 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 do. On this next slide, you see what a star Gloria has become. She is like, ta da, on top of this cake. Yeah. The ra She's, radiant, like the sun. Yep. She's such a star, she gives off her own light. And people and are losing clapping. their mind. Yeah, people love her. And this kind of happens in the game. This is like one of the last play. This is the very end of the level. This play is recreated when Gloria is all healed and she becomes all radiant. Mm -hmm. um, the things I notice about this picture are <laughs> the, pe the people on the stage, right, are are adorable. I think I could have drawn those because those are not the hardest to draw. Yeah, I uh, I didn't pull out all the stops with those guys. <laughs> and only one guy in the audience has white teeth. Oh yeah, it's probably the rest some are gray. Yeah, they would probably don't show up on the uh, average. Let me just I trust was... me on this one. There's one guy with white teeth. Right. And, and it's creepy that, it's creepy that the lady in the balcony has like a weird stick hand compared to it's well, not like probably fully gloves, I think. Right. That could be She's true. probably really old and she likes to wear gloves to cover up her her liver spots on her arms. Dude, my bro, do you think that the guy in the balcony on the right might be young Jasper? <laughs> I well, that's hmm. a good point. I was looking to see if there's any foreshadowing of a big fat mean critic, but uh, he—I don't think he appears in her psyche yet because she's still pretty happy. Gotcha. Okay, and then we see her getting the award, which is the same award you see in the game, kind of that later turns into a claw for Raz's hand. Ah, oh right. spoilers. Well, uh, I, just tons right. of spoilers. I think that's that's okay. That's she's true. a big okay. star, right? And that that guy's taking a flash the flash photography, which kind of looks like a oh, exploding bowl of soup. Do people that take these photos are they? Not they in a bad way. Yeah, no, you're right. They're they just don't way. even care, dude. They're, they're the types of photographers that don't need to look through the lens. They're just like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, they don't. And need that it. one guy, and that one guy has a real creepy mustache. <laughs> Not like I need. To, I don't know if I need to mention that, but there it is. Yeah, no, yeah, it's true. Yeah, he's not—he's okay. not the respectable kind of photographer. Yeah. Uh oh! But then she gets some bad news. Oh my God! She's crying. It is. It's really sad. I think it's okay because we really spell it out for you on the next page. <laughs> this is what I like in this next picture. It just says "mother suicide," which is important, right? <laughs> mother. You get, the, you, you get the you get the fact that her mother committed suicide. <laughs> But then there's a picture of her mother committing suicide. <laughs> Someone actually was there to capture the moment of her mother's suicide, which is horrific, but lucky in a way. Uh, I know. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that whoever wrote the letter is like puts all this information. Is like, you know what? Just straight up, the most important thing. Let's just write suicide super big, mm -hmm. so she she can <laughs> ignore the rest of the explanation. But you see, she she waited to the end of the letter. She started with like saying. Mother, and then a bunch of facts about her mother. Like, your mother was the sweetest person, the greatest, and we just wanted to say how great your mother was. By the way, she committed suicide at the end. <laughs> Luckily, I took a picture of it. <laughs> yeah, I took a picture of it. 
I was on my way up to like tell her to not do it, but then I, I was gonna stop her. But by the time I got my tripod set up and I took that picture, she had already left. Building. She's that, they're in the opposite building now. That's a sad story. We shouldn't be joking around that yeah. story. That's a sad story. Now, why is she at her dressing table on the stage? Is it that she was at? She was sitting at her dressing table. She still got the letters in her hands, and she looks up, and oh my God, she was on stage the whole time, and she's in her underwear. Right. Exactly. She, like she's bummed enough about her mom being dead, and that she on top of that, her mom's dead, and she's in her underwear. Well, this is just like those bad dreams where all of a sudden everyone's looking at yeah, you and pointing at you laid, in your underwear. You're laid naked for the world to see, and all those yeah. mean people in the audience with the shark teeth. Okay, so this is the part where she starts realizing, or or she starts thinking that she's always on stage her whole life, is on mm, stage, mm-hmm, right? Because mm-hmm. like in the real world, she thinks that she's on stage all the time. Remember? And isn't she that, feels, right? and she feels guilt because she shut when she became a star. She shut her own mom out. Oh, I believe, okay. I think I had to look it up. I wrote it down. And yeah. then we see this is one of my favorite drawings. The last drawing is one of my favorites, where she is just a, a two-headed beast. Both oh. incredibly happy and incredibly sad. Oh my god! Totally inspired by the two-headed baby logo. Yeah, it's like the logo for our company, but mm-hmm. uh, with bad hair. Did you notice like all the cra- kind of really gross stretch marks I did from no. the? Uh, I mean, you could see like where they're no. joined. It's, it's like to- that cover that Exodus album. It's like a <laughs> conjoined twin. I never noticed that. It really, is there realistic. was actually they have two necks. Yeah, there's like a little hole in between their necks. Yep, they're joined. Yeah, they're joined on body and side of head, but the neck is a little bit different. They have their own neck, so they could wear two necklaces. So she she turns into a person who has two personalities, like she does in the game—a really, really angry person and a really, really happy person who takes much better care of her eyelashes. <laughs> right. Her eyelashes; those are like her big mascara. Sheets of paper. They're like um, mm-hmm. really thick. Whereas the angry one, she just obviously just draws them in with an eyebrow pencil. And she loses her nose when she's angry. It's one of her things. Don't we all? And her hand gets more clawy. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's just some of the things that she happen when you're angry. she spits a lot when she talks. Well, they're both kind of spitting. No, they're both spitting. Spitting happens no matter what in Gloria's yeah, world. That's part of her problem. So Raz helps her get emotional balance and get her mouth spit under I think wraps. Bro, I think that's part of acting. I think when you're a really good actor and you're in the front row watching good actor or actress, you want a little, you want you, a little moisture on your face. You yes, get a little bit of a drops of feeling of like a that participation. Means, yes, they're projecting well. Mm-hmm, exactly. I'm gonna have to look that up, but yeah. Here we are at the first Waterloo World vault. This is called Fred versus Crispin. Now, I, this is like Boyd in that you've kind of branded the character, like a little intro, in a kind of train spotting way, I noticed. Oh. Is that what you were thinking, was train spotting? Wait, is like, that it's like... The name comes up, Fred. Like oh, Boyd, right, yeah, yeah train spotting, Ta-da. right. This is the only no. vault that has, I think, the name just straight up, with him posing in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a kind of a it's kind of a fun uh, fun looking asylum. It looks like it's, he's in a children's asylum. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, dude, that one. Yeah, the little the crazy dude that's on his leg seems pretty pleasant, but very got, small. Yeah, there's like one guy up on his leg, and then there's a guy down in the corner who looks like a naked like Ernie, and then a kid just running for it like with a straitjacket on. Yay! Yeah, yeah, they're having a blast, dude. Not the worst, not the worst asylum. But it's not. It's not. It's not the like a children's asylum, or is it? You never really hear about that. That's a good name for a heavy metal band. Children's Asylum. So it's like a pretty functional, happy, insane asylum. Except yeah. for then you see uh, um, what Fred has gone into a cell, or a padded cell, okay. which is also kind of like a heavy metal album. It's like Iron Maiden album, in a way. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is you the know, cover. Piece of my mind. And, yeah, and there's, but that's Crispin in there. And I, I, when you first come to the asylum, you think Crispin's the orderly and Fred's the lunatic. And then at a certain point, it's revealed that Fred was the orderly and Crispin was a, a patient at the insane asylum. Right. I don't know if this is the moment where you realize that, but at some point you... Re- I think you realize it this this moment, right? Because, I mean, no. well, I guess that looks like Crispin. <coughs> Crispin is in, is the one dude that looks like he's having a terrible time in this asylum. Yeah, and you know why? Because he's not a child. 
He's an adult and a child in Santa Sally. Why am I here? Why am I among the kids? I'm with a baby in Salem. <laughs> the worst. There's no crazy people my own age to talk to. <laughs> so Fred thinks he'll cheer him up by bringing over a copy of Waterloo O. <laughs> Waterloo O. Oh. I just like that name because it's like it's inspired by what game? <laughs> Stratego. Stratego. <laughs> Which I don't know if I've ever actually played a game of Stratego. It was always the board game around my house that like my older brothers had. And yeah. We ne- I never really. I think I played once. I played. I I actually played like a, a year or two ago, and it was fun, man. Really? Yeah, it was fun. No, no wonder it was pretty famous. Waterloo O was the game. Three O's. I didn't realize <laughs> like the name of this level is mm. Waterloo World, which is a reference to a um a movie, a Waterloo World. I mean, Waterworld. Which is kind of a weird thing to make a reference to in second lots. Wait, it's a reference to Water World? Well, kind of. I mean, Water the World. And, you know, because Water World had just come out. Remember that? <laughs> no way. Oh, that came I out think, way before I think before it's only that. a reference in, like, my mind. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. It was years before. No one knows. Okay. I always think World so, War because it's two Ws. Anyways. That's, that's a better idea. So what do you th- more Thanks, dude. Yeah, what, what do you think is up with the little rabbit on, his, on Crispin's back? I was wondering what that little <laughs> rabbit was for. Um, I assume that was one of the dark uh, animal familiars that is tormenting him and driving him mm, insane. Probably, dude. So now now they're playing the game of Waterloo O, and uh, Crispin's sitting up on some books because he's really short, mm-hmm. and uh, he's got no arms. I don't know how he's playing. I guess we find out in a minute. But uh, Fred has a really condescending look on his face. <laughs> he's like, oh, how cute. Yeah, this guy's it is. trying to play a game with me, and he's got a scar down his eye, a little bit like um, um, that guy from Survivor, not Survivor, Lost. Lost, right, right, right. Lock. He's got like a lock scar. Oh, he does have a lock scar. Yeah. Yeah, you know what that was? I think that's um in the rendering. I'm trying to render that that there's a little bit extra flesh coming towards you. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is how he moves the pieces. That's horrifying. Look at those teeth. Oh, those crazy teeth. Oh, man. There it is. I'm just remembering who did the voice for Crispin. It was the guy who played um, uh, Murdoch. Yeah, Murdoch from A-Team. A-team. You can kind of see that character right here a little bit coming through. He's very powerful. Yeah. (laughs) We went to record. I was like, oh, my God, you're Murdoch. And he goes, I played a character named Murdoch on a show, yes. What? (laughs) I offended him. I totally offended him. I felt bad. And on the next slide, Fred is shocked. How can this be? Wow. How can a, how can a crazy man in a children's asylum beat me, an orderly, a very tall orderly? And uh, and and he just becomes uh, obsessed he, with beating him. He's like, I'm going to beat him. He but turns look, into the Riddler. <laughs> he turns into the Riddler. <laughs> and he starts throwing down more pieces. And it looks like Crispin is starting to be aware that he's pushing his buttons because he's got a big smile on his face. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, he is. So it's, it seems this experience is waking up something dormant in both of them. A desire to win in Fred and um, a sort of evil confidence in Crispin. Do you think that in this, this last slide, um, he's pushing it, push, try, he's, it's, maybe it's stuck? It looks like he's trying to shove it into the board, like trying to press it through the wood. It's hard to, it's hard to deal with, with those things when you're starting to become insane. This was making me want to build an actual version of that game. Dude, yeah, that it would be kind of fun. Like those little, little men and little castle and little flag and oh, we should get around to that. I like that it's a hex board too. I think that's pretty, yeah. cr- pretty fun. Look. You know, the original version of the game, it was we had a like a f- semi-functional hex game in there, and you had to move the pieces around. Do you remember that version of the game? Mm-hmm. And it, the whole thing was a rectangle, and it was a hex game, and you had to put pieces. And they actually fought each other, and it was somewhat simulated, and we just thought it was boring, and so we made a fake game. Uh, you don't remember that? That sounds familiar. Hmm. Some poor programmer worked on that pretty hard, too. Oh, and man. then we were flying around it with a debug camera, and we got really close to the board, and we're like, wouldn't it be cool if you could actually get really small and get onto the board? And then that's where it, it went from there. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Ah, now the second half of Fred's journey into insanity. Fred versus Napoleon. 
And you're like, Napoleon? How could Napoleon come into modern times? Hmm. Does he have a time travel machine? Hmm. Yeah, That would be a good movie, Napoleon with the time travel machine. I think that was, they called it Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So here we see uh, how that's progressed with Fred trying to beat Crispin at Waterloo O. And it doesn't look like Fred has won won very many games. (laughs) No. And but there's and obviously time has passed because the walls have decayed and there's yeah. a bug there. Yeah, and it's well he might have Fred might have won some games and then it looks like Crispin may have taken that part of the wall out. Oh, that's that could be what happened. He might be he might be cheating. Could be what but it's nice that they took the time to actually draw small caricatures of themselves, <laughs> and not just not just put the uh, <clears throat> the names there. I know that's true. And they and they really got the ch- nose right, and they got the bandage on Christmas head. <laughs> that's actually his forehead, but yeah. Oh, that's his forehead. Yeah, but then and then they even uh, made one guy happy and one guy just not as happy. It's <laughs> real life. Anyway. Which is kind of like how did they predict that? Because when they first started taking score, they must have not known who was going to win. Crispin so probably started. Crispin was psyching him out. Yeah. Well, after a while, they st- he started winning so many games. He's like, you know, you know what, Fred? Let- let's start keeping track. I- I'm kind of losing track of how many times I'm beating you. Okay, now in this next frame, Fred is starting to dance. Why is he dancing? Fred is starting to dance. <laughs> he's all. <laughs> he's like, I'm I don't know feeling the groove. Because <laughs> he's like, finally, dance. finally, you've got your groove back <laughs> in your legs. No, he's had a he's he's he his 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 losing of all these games has summoned uh, an, uh, a genetic memory inside of him, a deep ancestral familiarity with losing and and desire for winning. And you see it in the next frame when he looks in the mirror. Who does he see? Oh, how many times has this happened to you? Oh my God! Napoleon Bonaparte. And he's like, what? He's all, dude. What the pl- His hair is messed up. That's a symbol for yeah. going a little bit, having a rough time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've noticed. And he turned his back on his on his patient, which he should never do. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Insane asylum. Yeah. And Napoleon awakes, and he's got his hand in his pocket. And I remember, we were making this, and people, someone was like, "You know, actually, uh, Napoleon was actually quite tall." What? Who said yeah. that? Yeah, it's like this myth that he's short. Oh, maybe I've heard that, maybe. No, that's not fun at all, though, is it? <gasps> he leaps out of the mirror, and he knocks uh, Fred's eye right off his head. Popped right out. <laughs> Fred's eye goes flying. <laughs> oh, man, that was oh geez. probably the worst part of his uh, going insane. Mm-hmm. And he jumps out of the mirror, which is now filled with the mystical vortex, mm-hmm. and he uh, goes to strangle. Wait, I, I forget if Fred. Fred's arms weren't. Fred's arm's super small in real life? Yeah. No. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they come out. And remember, I was concerned that Hmm. people would think you were making fun of people with short arms. Oh, you were? And you're like, no, no, it just looks funny. Yeah, I was like, it looks like, it looks like he's, they're so small, it looks like he, like, is missing part of his arms or something. I was like, Mm. people didn't think we're making fun of the short armed people but I was just but, I guess I was thinking the joke is like you were excited for him to unwrap his big arms and they turn out and to it's be not small. that impressive <laughs> <laughs> but maybe like that um, but obviously that joke didn't carry through to this <laughs> I didn't I didn't draw him well, like that here. I mean what well I, maybe you know what happened maybe he's been in that straight checker for so long that his arms just atrophied and shrank it bound him up that's true is that, that's, that's kind of sad that's really sad but now, and I like this picture, the last picture, which shows how happy he is now that he's gone crazy. Ah, that's true. And everyone else is pretty darn happy too, man. Yeah, and they got their eyes sideways just like he does. And he's mm. like, la, la, la. There's one thing I knew, as soon as we started this game, we had an insane asylum. We were worried that people would think that the game was making fun of people with actual mental problems. Mm-hmm. And so we, we decided it had to be crazy with a K, not just, you know, crazy. So, like, it had to be over-the-top, silly, kind of crazy, so people would know it was taken in the right, lighthearted. Uh-huh. And so we're yeah. like, we knew we had to have a guy walking around with a Napoleon hat on, because that's just, like, such a symbol of cartoony, insane asylums. Right, right, yeah. So that was, like, one of the very early thoughts for this game, is that we need to have a Napoleon Bonaparte person in an insane asylum. And ta-da, here it is. Yeah. Dreams realized. Oh, 
Okay, this is Edgar's Lament, which is the story of how things went bad for Edgar in high school with Lana. So the, at this point, they're, they're having a great time, but now... Uh, we'll they've been dating for a while in high school, and they've uh, carved their love into a tree. All right. Right? Yep, they carved it into the tree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what kind of tree it is. Maybe a uh, redwood, perhaps, or maybe an oak. Probably an oak. That's not a redwood. It's probably an oak tree. I'm thinking elm. Perhaps an elm tree. Yeah, that shows what you know about bark. Yeah, they are at prom, which has uh, apparently like an undersea theme, because there's fish. Okay, right? oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you drew it. Come on, tell me there's fish. Uh, yeah, undersea, undersea. And she king. has, like, a tiara. So they must be becoming the king and queen of the prom. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, because they're very, very popular. And he's standing on a box because he's not very tall. Yeah. Even though he told her earlier that he wants to be big. Yeah. He's still tall. He got still really small. He got really small as far as character consistency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's nice that they have a, a crate on hand, though, for... Um, yeah, so for people, short people. Yeah. yeah, people like this. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Anyway, it's probably a nice dance. Probably really pretty. He's got big hands, though. Oh, yeah. His hands definitely are getting larger. But you know what? Maybe that's what he's saying. He's like, I would like my upper body to get much larger. Mm-hmm. I'm sick of and having my, big feet. Yeah, my lower body, I want to shrink. Here they are stars of their respective um, uh, extracurricular activities. Edgar is on the wrestling team. And Lana is a star cheerleader. And he's got the bull on his chest because he's a strong leg bull. And he's obviously been um, eating a lot of powdered donuts. Oh, because yeah. right. <laughs> At least in my version. No, nah, that's also my version. And she has like fluffy sleeves on, right? Her arms aren't that big. No, she fills that up. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's how her shape of her arm is. Uh, and he's kind of more on display right now, actually. He's on like a stump. Yeah. Or a that's, tire. That's his little display stump. <laughs> he carries tire. a little display around for any photographic uh, opportunities. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So he's, uh, he's on the wrestling team on the next slide, and they all have their animal personas. And these are the wrestlers that he, in high school, played with, but then later appear as the Luca Libre wrestlers that you fight against in the game. Mm-hmm. So he's doing the bull. He's doing little uh, horns by his head. And then you see the guy doing the tiger in the lower left. I think that's tiger. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. And then above him is the cobra. And he's, got a little co- he's got a little cobra on his shirt. So he's doing the Hus, cobra stance. And then that's uh, eagle behind him in the back, right? Uh-huh. Yep. Eagle wings. Eagle with the wings up. And then the dragon is just kind of doing like a dragon pose, I guess. <laughs> like He's like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, ah, I don't know. The tiger's so. already got this one. I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, man. You guys. Uh, oh. I'm not feeling it. He's like, yeah. He's, he's still he's like, ah, the fellows won't notice. They're in he's their like, own zone. I'm just going to wave my arms. I thought Dragon would be the coolest mascot, but I don't have a pose. <laughs> dude, they really have to say, they're like... They really are good buddies, dude. This is like a fun team, they dude. They're like, yeah, really. Because usually when you get together for a sports team, you don't come up with animal personas. Yeah, man, that probably made them super intimidating in matches. But uh, the dragon guy's pretty friendly among the wrestlers. He's got like a little friendly head on that massive scary body. Yeah, it's all combed nicely. And only yeah. one of them wears a helmet. Fun fact, dragon was actually the mascot of my high school, the dragons. Oh, really? Still Fun lives. fact, dragon was also the mascot of my elementary school. What? Why, dude? Weird. Okay, on the next slide, you see... Oh, what is happening in the center here? Oh, I see. That's I thought that was a guy's chest. That's his arms. He's holding... This is the cheerleading squad. He's holding up Lana. In a, in, I guess that happens in cheerleading. Seems kind of suggestive, but I guess it's pretty normal. It happens every day. Cheerleaders everywhere across the nation are doing this. Everybody, right at this moment, there's a cheerleader holding another one by touching the rear. Anyways. Was that what he's doing? He's holding her by her inner thigh, but that's cool. And the other ladies are kneeing the kicking. Kicking in the face and the throat. 
Yeah. The other cheerleaders. And then they're uh, they're a pretty spirited bunch. Yeah, super spirited. But I think that uh, cheerleading guy is going to be trouble. Uh-huh. Yeah. Feeling. You might be right, dude. I like her pose. She's like, she's either going ready, okay, or else she's just waking up. She's like, Ugh. morning. Yeah, every morning. Good morning, uh. everybody. What am I doing up here so high? Did I but sleep then, all night here? I'm not sure what causes her to turn on Edgar in this next slide. You see, he's like, oh, how strong I am. And she's like, oh, I hate your muscles. Your muscles make me sick. After a while, dude. I know you boring. opened my locker for me, and you told me about your hopes and dreams, and you bought me a milkshake, but the bloom is off the rose. Yeah. It seems like she would maybe just get more bored, like, oh, I'm kind of getting bored of your muscles, but now she's just, like, mad at her his muscles. That seems weird. Hmm. I should have drawn that face different. No, no, I like it. I think it's explained on the next slide that she obviously is just going for the glamour and the clean cutness of Mr. Butchin here. Oh, dude. Dean De Legrand. Dean Legrand. Wow, dude, his eyebrows are insane. Is that how it was in the game? Like, his hair grows down through his eyebrows? It's like his, yeah, his hair had to be shaved back to accommodate his eyebrows growing. Or actually, maybe that's all, if he didn't have eyebrows, and that's all hair that he just decided yeah. to cut into eyebrows. It's like a comb over, but for eyebrows. Yeah. He had to graft his hair down onto his eyes to make eyebrows. He's all, dude, that's the sexiest part of, of the the fella, is it's amazing just, eyebrows. It's cut in there like a fade haircut, like it's just... Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Maybe, I guess we understand why Lana fell for him. Where are his eyebrows? His eyebrows are... Well, he's got a lot covered up with his cap. Hmm. Wait, does this like mean he's? Uh, I mean, he's basically just relaxing, and like, well, but like, this doesn't mean that he's pinned. Is that a pinned position? Well, let me explain from my wrestling background. That is not a pin, but he's not doing well. I don't. I don't know why the referee's blowing the whistle because he's not being pinned. I think he's looking off in the background where he sees uh, Dean Legrand and Lana kissing, and the audience is booing. And Dolph Lundgren has him on the ground. Dolph Lundgren's like, uh, what are you doing, dude? What are you, <laughs> are should you, you try to put so, him uh, uh, So you're like a lead weight. I can't even turn you over. Let me pinch you right here. I'm going to pinch you right here on the belly. Can you feel that? Do you feel that? How about here? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's pretty young to have a Salvador Dolly mustache. Well, some well some dudes like um they're very they develop early. You know what I mean? Some dudes get like get that stuff, and he definitely don't. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds creepy. I mean, don't, me. <laughs> don't I? For example, I got gray hair early. That's all I'm saying. Now this is after the match, and he's lost the match, and all his wrestling buddies are looking at him angry, except for one of them's missing. Who's missing? I think two are missing. There's Tiger and uh, maybe Dragon. and Okay, anyway, they're all p super pissed at him. Dragon is on the other side sad also because everyone's frowning at him about coming up with a real terrible <laughs> pose. Uh, pose. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we well, that's another, another slide thing. Tiger's got one of those really special noses. It's just like a, uh, almost like a hand. He's got like a hand nose. <laughs> yeah, a little fist. Little, yeah. Well, they both have that. So does uh, other dude. So does yeah. this is Cobra. So this is why all the wrestlers in the game are are always mean to you and yelling insults to you and fighting you because you let them down. <laughs> Edgar's love inside of the mind of Edgar Tegley, who I thought was so cleverly named uh, because. Edgar Leteg is the name of uh, the big famous actual, like the most famous Black Velvet artist there is, and so we changed really? his name a little bit. Did you know that? I didn't know that, dude. All these and facts you didn't it. tell me at the time. That's cool. Ed Edgar Leteg, look it up. So, okay. um, Edgar Tegley, this, this, these are the vaults where I think, in the, in the one case in the game, where what's happening in the level, as far as the backstory, is so convoluted and weird that you, the vaults are the only thing that really explain it a little bit. Right, yeah, yeah. Like, not everybody understood the whole high school thing in this one. 
Oh, uh, from the environments and stuff? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Probably true. Let's check it out. This is, but this is obviously high school right here. But yeah, here we are. We're looking at um, uh, Lana. <laughs> Lana. It's not Mia. I it know. Looks, it looks like it could like be her sister. It's in the same vein. Interesting. But that's an accident, right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There might be a reason. Shh. Why is she so sad, though, in this? You know, I th well, I think she can't get her locker open. See the oh. jiggly lines on the lock? <laughs> She's got uh, she's what looks like a little claw, like Dr. Lovato, and she's pulling on the lock. Chick, chick, chick. And she's she like, also, what? <laughs> well, dude, I mean, that's the deal with locks is they're hard to get open when they're locked. <laughs> Perhaps she, like, forgot her combination, actually. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, oh, she, exactly. Gotcha. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, well, maybe she's just not that smart. She's just pulling on it going, what? Why, why is isn't this it, thing? Why isn't it why? working? <laughs> she forgot her combination or it's stuck or something's coming in. Right. She has a rose in her hair, which is a big whole llama thing with the mm -hmm. roses falling. So in the background, that's uh, Edgar, young mm -hmm. Edgar, and he's, he's talking to his wrestling friends. And then he comes over in the next frame, and bam, he pops it off because he's so strong. Pop. Pops <laughs> off the door. And Lana's like, ooh, oh my. <laughs> she's, not, she's not super sure what to make of it. She's like, I guess I'm pumped <laughs> because I can get my stuff, but it's is also... Is open or is that... Oh, it's open, yeah. dude. She's Super. excited. She's, she's she's flabbergasted. Actual bobby socks, too. Oh, yeah, she is, dude. But it looks like her door to her locker already has a guy's picture and a heart on it. So does that mean she already loves someone else? Well, I mean, it's probably like a musician or something. Oh, it's like Justin Bieber of his time. Yeah, Justin Bieber of the time, which is probably in the 50s, so it was probably maybe his buddy Holly. So he totally is uh, clever enough to work this locker scam into a date. And he takes her out, and she's talking about how much she likes milkshakes, and he's just eating like a million sliders. Are those like White Castle burgers, or are those like full-size burgers, and he's just got giant hands? Those are full-size burgers. Okay. And he's got a, he's obviously missing his middle fingernail. Oh, yeah. It's peeled off. Oh, no. <laughs> they're eating a lovely burger shake, and, they're, and their love is taking shape. Okay, first... She mm -hmm. tells him how much she likes milkshakes, and then on the next frame, he's talking about uh, all his hopes and dreams for life, which is he wants to be uh, some sort of a Sasquatch imitator. <laughs> he's, putting his, he's putting his hands up really big, like, I want to be this big. I want to be huge. I'm huge. Look at my foot. And she's falling in love with him. He's like, he's I love... saying he wants to be a wrestler. Yeah. What? He's like, I want to be a big wrestler, and this is my favorite swimming pool. <laughs> So, yeah. I thought that was, it's a it's a park it's like a lake park. Oh, that's right, it's a lake. Okay, now this always confused me. This next one, she's hawking up like a huge loogie. She's like spitting. <laughs> what is yeah, that? it's a little shell. She she's spitting. Out, yeah, she ate some escargot. Escargot. She ate some escargot. <laughs> and now she's spitting out a shell. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, he's all. Oh, oh, God. Of he's all. I don't even remember having escargot. <laughs> they must have been from an earlier meal. She I better take off my jacket. Cheating on me with a French man. Oh. Look how clever you were with the foreshadowing of the bull on his belt buckle. Oh, uh, I know. Oh, wow, I forgot. I was very oh, clever there. A network of Scott Campbell symbolism all throughout this. And now he gives her, he's so romantic, he gives her his jacket. Yep. And she's all, all nice and warm. He's all, and, and then, oh, what, go ahead. And she's like, oh, what was he going to say? No, you say, you go. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say she put um, her escargot on her head. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, what's this, what's this uh, snail shell on my head? Yeah, that's a much better place for it. <laughs> <laughs> so she uh, gets his jacket, and she's like, now I'm going to give you something. And it's a rose. Psych. Oh. That's sweet. And you know it's the rose. Still has its thorns. Oh, yeah. Super Brett Michaels of you. Yeah, and I just noticed he's shaved, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, he's shaved yeah, he's all since <laughs> he sat down. And he, well, he thought they were going to make out. He was like, oh, I gave him my jacket, now we're going to make out. So he leaned over really quick, bzzz, and he shaved <laughs> super fast. And he put, he put some, like, 
Tres Flores in his hair. <laughs> That's like when uh, when dudes are like or, or like about to make out, and then you you go you turn your head and then you spray binaca in your mouth, and yeah. you get back instead. <laughs> That's exactly what happens when dudes make out. And then oh, and then they kiss. They finally kiss. He's got uh, a flower in his hair, which I never noticed before. That he's whatever. Well, well, that's no, that's the flower that she just gave him. Yeah, yeah, it looks good in his hair. So I might as well put it there. What if they're, what if they're not kissing? <laughs> that's what, not, what that's if... not what normally a guy would do. I think if a girl said, "Here, here's a rose," <laughs> like, <laughs> put in his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. She's like, oh, uh, <laughs> that's not what I thought you were gonna do with it. Okay, mm. well, I so well, that's what you did with it. <laughs> yeah. But I just closed my eyes. I just, Dude, I was just thinking, maybe they're not kissing, dude. Maybe they're going, ooh, boo, 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 You know what I mean? Yeah, they did. Maybe they're not That's actually what I assumed they were doing. I thought they were singing, you blue moon. Blue moon, come to do, 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 Whatever. That's gross. The big top, this is uh, unique in that Meat Circus has only one vault. Why is that? Were you, were you getting tired by the end? And you were just like, I don't want to do, do two for Meat Circus. Uh, yeah, I think this is a total afterthought, right? No, this is the most important. This is one that I wanted oh. to do somehow. I, I wanted to have this be a cutscene in the game or something, but I could never. I just wanted to have this tragic explanation of why... Uh, Coach Oleander has so much has such an issue about being small. Uh, well, let's just get into it. Here we see baby Coach Oleander. Isn't that cute? Yeah, 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 super cute. He's got a propeller in his head, which is actually operating. Yeah, bzzz, that's what it's gets actually him spinning. Going. Yeah, I guess because he's running. Right. And he's uh, in the middle of a meadow full of tiny, tiny little vacation houses. <laughs> right, and a bunch of fried eggs all over yeah, the place. Fried eggs and little tiny, or maybe it's beekeeping. No, those are rabbit Be- hutches. Oh, oh, they are rabbit hutches. It's, yeah, it's dawn in the in the rabbit hutch area. And he runs in, and he looks at the bunnies, and look how happy he is in the next one. He's just big, bright eyed. Look at those bunnies. Yeah, yay! I feel like is there something wrong with these bunnies? Because. Uh, I feel like this is the sort of thing where we reveal terrible faces. No, no, they're happy faces. Yeah, that was going to psych you out. But there's big fat bunnies and then the one little tiny bunny. Because in the game you see like these big fat bunnies and you see these little tiny bunnies. And so this little tiny bunny is like the runt of the litter. Oh, yeah, runt of the litter. So this is the one you see in the nightmare level that hops out of that egg. Same one, right. Or hops up to you when you're in the egg. This is the little tiny one, and, 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 and the coach loved it, but it's the run to the litter just like him, so they feel really close. And you can see in the next one, they fall in love. Oh, he's like, oh, let me, let me hold the side of your head. You know I mean? Yeah. Pet your cheek. <laughs> Pet your always. cheek. He's like, that's so sweet. Thank you. And they're best friends. They've created um, an actual heart. Nothing could go wrong. Oh no, a shadow. Here we see Oh shadow. the butcher. Shadow. <laughs> his shadows his shadows are always not good. The worst. I just realized, wait a minute, is Oleander a criminal? He's got striped. Oh yeah, he's wearing he must have broken out of Alcatraz. Oh man, this is his first thing. Hightail it. Go, <laughs> go straight to the bunny thing. I need to find bunny right really quick. It's been ten years since I've seen a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Oh man! So he's in. Uh, he's the shadow of the dad comes and he's like, "That cool. rabbit's no good for anything. He's a runt. Give it to me." Rah. I always thought uh, here you can see how big he is in the next frame and how pointy his fingernails are. I always thought he looked like um, Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's kind of like yeah. He does kind of look like Lee Marvin. He kind of was also looks like my grandpa, but my grandpa's mo- very pleasant. Yeah, but he's, he's supposed my... to looks like my grandpa. My grandpa, you know what he was? A butcher. What? Really? Weird, weird. Yeah. Weird, that's an interesting fact. It's just strange. Was he mean? Did he... Uh... Killed my bunnies. He did kill your bunnies. No. But I had a friend uh, growing up who had uh, bunnies, and he did have this little like slaughtering area 
in his backyard there was like a a, a shelf that was bolted onto this fence and it had a bunch of tools hanging by it and mm-hmm. the shelf just had this kind of like permanent perma blood stain on it because that's where the dad would just like haul over the bunnies and just slaughter them no way yeah. did you yeah. and you saw that did you see i never that? saw it happening but i mean if you raise bunnies for me you gotta have some place to uh take their pajamas off as they say he's so mean he's like i'm gonna take the smallest thing here they're gonna take this bunny pick it up by the ears and take it away from you and take it over to my kidney bean store. Oh. <laughs> He's all dude. I sell kidney beans. Well, not the kidney bean store. No. Don't stretch out. Don't stretch out, out out his ears. Look at how his ears are so stretched out. I know. That's the worst thing. This is really violent. Oh, this, this one's making me sad. I bet he could have caught him if he didn't have the drag from the propeller helmet going the opposite direction. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably true. If he could just le- leaned his head forward, he probably would have been able to fly up. So this is your lesson, son. If you really want to catch me, take that stupid hat off. <laughs> I'm going to the kidney bean store, but sure. surely this will turn out well. Oh gosh, look at that! That's a lot of tears coming off of the coach. Yeah, it's tears. Like a lot That's of swept. tears. Why did he watch? Why did he go? Over? Why did he just? I don't know. Maybe he thought he could stop him. Here's the dad. He's ch- butchering the bunny. The bunny's pretty tiny. Very tiny, dude. But he looks like he's got a human nose. Who? The bunny. Oh, That's really? a detail I never noticed until he's got like a human nose. And he's stretching his ears out, which is, are going to slow down the, the blade of the cleaver as it comes down, but I don't think they're going to really it's help him very much. Not against that cleaver, dude. Not against that cleaver. You know the propeller? I was just playing the game the other night, and there's that propeller in the coach's house. I mean, his little school classroom in the in the camp. There is? Okay. Yeah, like the roof. Remember, they live in these kind of canopy tree forts. Oh, I And uh, there's like a, 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 a seam in the uh, tree fort, and like there are these propeller blades that spin. I think they cool off the classroom. Oh, right, 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 right. Is that, that that's was... obviously what these are a reference to. Wow, that's really, really interesting. Probably didn't even realize you did that, did you? And he's eating a huge a white vanilla cake. Mm. Mm. Or that's something else that's really hilarious. Stick of butter. No. <laughs> yeah, the coach says, oh, I want to scream, but I've got a huge stick of butter in my mouth. Oh, I'm Dad, so it's one thing to cut this. But I hate to stick this stick of butter in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. It's delicious.